Hello, how's everybody doing? What is up, guys? Welcome. We're here for a classic cast with. Uh, oh, I got stay safe and tips mixed out on their on their panels. I gotta get that figured out in a second. But, oh no! Uh, oh no! It's it's, ruined. I'm actually stay safe. Yeah. Uh, we've been keeping it secret for a long time, but there it is. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, there it is. I, I'm tips out. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Uh, so we're here with Stay Safe. We're here with Tips. And of course, our, our guest, our friend, Kevin Jordan, uh, original Vanilla Wow class designer. Uh, Kevin was in charge of designing all the classes. He's been with us on Classic Cast before. Um, yeah, he's been with us here on Classic Cast before. And uh, he is also playing the Wow Classic beta. So we wanted to have him on and have him talk about kind of what his beta experience is, right? He's, he's obviously seen the game through uh, several different lenses at this point, right? You've got your. You know, designing the game, you've looked at the game kind of like in, in retrospect, and then now you're, you're playing the game as like a, a regular player uh, slash streamer, actually. Kevin also just started streaming recently uh, in the last few months. So uh, you guys should definitely go follow him at Kevin Jordan and ask him wow and general game design questions because he has a wealth of knowledge. So, Kevin, uh, would you kind of uh, introduce yourself a little bit more for people who might not be familiar with you? Yeah, my name is Kevin Jordan. I was one of the original three game designers on the wow project way like back in the beginning um i've seen the game through lenses nine lenses warrior rogue shaman etc um but uh yeah I, I helped set the foundations for a lot of the core elements of the game's design and then as each individual um sort of element needed more um specific care and love and we added more people and my focus became working on the character classes the talents system and the talents themselves and uh that's uh what i did largely until i left a few months before cataclysm so long story short that means if anyone thinks there is a vanilla class that's overpowered it's your fault or under <laughs> that's right that's right yeah 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 or underpower. It's also my fault. Mm -hmm. Or perfect. It's that's my fault. All right. Perfect, like the retribution paladin, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which you actually played. That was your main class that you played. That's right. I kept a ret paladin and a undead mage max level. Yeah. I, I still have a. I still have a feeling that they probably made you play a ret paladin in order for that's you to use that as an excuse. For uh, for whenever people complain about it, well, the guy who made the class plays a uh, he right. plays Bound, so. But I secretly <laughs> hated it, so I was <laughs> getting them back. Yeah, it's all very political. Yeah. Game design has nothing to do with, you know, if you're having a good time, it's just who's pissed you off that week, in their class a little bit. Yeah, of course, of course. So, um, so yeah, Kevin, you've uh, you've been playing beta for some time, and we all have been playing the beta for some I time have. now. Uh, what is uh, w what is the way you're approaching the game this time? You, I think you, I saw you were playing a warlock. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Nice. I, what I've noticed those goddamn harvest golems can't be taunted, or Go. feared, or drained or life, feared, or right. drained. Right. You got you got no one to blame but yourself. You got Who no one to that? blame but yourself, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, that actually was me, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, like was. I didn't do a lot of the the, the creature abilities um you know after a certain point in the game's development but i do remember making those things soulless and not you know mindless and that was a different thing but man that's biting me in the ass now true so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's one of the things that like um especially those of us who uh and and like I, I think i think we've all been pretty vocal about this like talking about how like private servers are different than classic and there's a lot of things that like there's a lot of things that we know is wrong, and there's a lot of things that is probably wrong, but we don't know. Uh, there's some things that are right too, right, about about private yeah, servers. Yeah. But that's one of the big things that uh, I think I've noticed is e even more so than I remember, just kind of off the cuff. Like I didn't realize it until actually getting back into the game. It seems like every day I'm finding something more and more that is not part of the um, that it just kind of like it, there's more RPG elements to the game, and that's one of the things right. that when you guys made the original game, like. It seems that as WoW has gone on, even throughout the course of Vanilla, you could say, it, it kind of moves away more and more from like roleplay elements, right? You could talk about like right. Torrens not having mounts initially because they were like too heavy or whatever. Yeah, I was like, yeah. okay, well, we got to give them mounts and this and that. But it, it seems like all the initial decisions for the game that you guys made was based around roleplay. Is that right? Right. Uh, yeah, and, and mostly just about players colliding with each other and having experiences. Like this is one of the things that I've seen 
I've watched a fair number of videos on my stream of various YouTubers and Twitch people playing classic and they come from the full spectrum. There's the guys who think it's going to be amazing. And there's the guys who think it's going to be awful. Mm -hmm. And so here's the experience I've seen that's connected all of them. One is pretty much everyone is excited about classic. Um, even the guys who thought it was going to be terrible. They're like, they're stuck. They're almost instantly stuck. The other, the other very, very specific thing that I've noticed um, is that the game is hard enough and puts people together. You know, there's enough collision that every single one of those videos I've watched is someone going into one of those early caves in the game that's heavily spawned and is really tough and a lot of people die and they've run into someone else and they've formed a duo and they've been, ended up like grouping with that person for hours after that. Yeah. It's like go, go into a cave and loot a friend. Right. And it's, it's kind of an yeah. unbelievable difference between that to me is like the, one of the key examples of the difference between classic and BFA In BFA that does not happen. Right. Because you destroy everything, the game's not difficult. The guy that's there is in your way in terms of progress. Uh, if there's a guy there at all, he hasn't been sharded away or whatever. Um, so, it's it's crazy how many times that specific experience happened, and that's what classic is all about. It's just about there's a ton of people running around around you, and the game facilitates you bumping into other people and you mm -hmm. needing each other so that you form relationships. Yeah, yeah I, I've had this conversation all the time on my stream. Like, I don't think the human nature has changed between 2004, 2005, and 2019. I, I think it's like you said, the game facilitates and also necessitates this interaction and teamwork and cooperation. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you just, you find out at level three or four, like, it's going to, you're going to have a hard time if you're unwilling to cooperate <clears throat> with other people. I think, yeah. I think that's one of those beautiful yeah. things about Vanilla Wow or Classic Wow. Yeah, you might be able to get to max level, but you're not going to have any of those shiny things you might want, you know, like yeah. all the real stuff is group oriented. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is like, I, I want to, I want to highlight that thing you said that human nature hasn't changed. I agree. Like, I think a lot of people assume that the modern gamer has somehow diff is somehow different or wants different things um, based on the way they've been conditioned. And some of that is true, but I also think a lot of it is, because they haven't been given an opportunity to play a game like classic and classic is going to grab them in I the agree. same way you see people like the streamers and the YouTubers, like they're pessimistic about the game. Right. And they go in and before they know it within two hours, they're like, they find themselves playing for another 10 and like having to force themselves to stop, to go do things. Right. So right. I think for a lot of people, they're going to be grabbed by this experience, just like it grabbed us back in the day. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of been uh it's been interesting. Like you look at my friends list now, like whenever I'm playing the beta, I have I mean I have some people that, you know, I have played with in the past that I'm running back into on the beta, which is kind of cool. But I've made friends with a lot of people that uh like I, I didn't know who they were or you know, they were just uh, just different people, right? That uh I've had the pleasure of coming across and having like an a authentic like in-game experience with and making friends with people right. and I talk to them all the time like uh, just yeah. whether it's about like, you know, oh, I, hey, I figured this thing out with Paladins, right? I've been testing this or uh, right. whether it's like, oh, like this quest over here, like you guys should do this. This is a really good item that you can get that's better than any other drop, you know, minimum requirement, level 40 or 30 or whatever. Um, right. But yeah, having having those experiences, I think, has been uh, it, it's been a really, really cool and really special because playing BFA for the last uh, or playing like Legion and BFA for the last like month and a half or a year and a half, really. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been pretty, it, it, it's just lacking, right? It, it's lacking in those yeah. experiences. And, and that's one of the things that I think you remember the most about going back and playing uh, World of Warcraft. Like, you you know, you, oh, okay, you're not, think about it like this. It's like, oh, okay, like I, I got Gladiator this season or like I had this rating or we killed this boss, whatever, and that's fine. Those are cool accomplishments. Those are cool achievements to, to have, but... I think what makes those achievements and accomplishments, whatever, uh, so special is the people that you do it with. And that's really what it all kind of comes back to. It kind of comes full circle and it's like, it's, it's about community. It's about people. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. yeah, even like what's, what's cooler, right? 
getting Gladiator rank one in whatever expansion or yeah, right oh, sorry, it, well yeah I was saying like what's cooler <laughs> is it cooler to do that or is it cooler to do um, I don't know do like a really hard quest to like like for example we did Scarlet Monastery right we did Scarlet Monastery Cathedral Armory like we were level thirty and we we did both of them or uh, like I I tanked Older Man as a prop paladin uh, last last night. Yeah, I think the old man was a prop paladin and did the whole thing and I, and I did the last boss and it was super exciting and it felt really good whenever we completed yeah. it because yeah. it's like, I didn't expect to be able to do that, you know, it, right. let alone the other the other stuff that we've done. Um, <laughs> but it's been cool, right? And obviously, Gladiator and stuff is like cooler or whatever, but it's, I remember the people that I played with and like getting through that together and that's the most yeah. special thing. So yeah, let, me, I mean, let me ask you, this is something I run on my stream. This is a quiz I run on my stream all the time. I want all three of you guys to tell me your answer, your opinion. What is the best content in World of Warcraft? Is it PvP? Is it arena? Is it uh, dungeons? Is it raids? Is it soloing? You know, what is the best? What is the best content? It's the social it? aspect. It's it's. Just well, you're, you're talking about. Okay. Are, are yeah, are you talking about content or just anything? In yeah, the just game? What, what's the best content? Like, what do you enjoy doing the most in terms of the content? The things that allow you to group like, up hang, with the most people, I think. Okay. Hanging out, with right. hanging out with people. So like, like if I think back on like my rating experience and stuff like that, and even like versus vanilla rating experience, like vanilla private server rating experience, like probably my most notable kills happened in like, you know, tier like, you know, during Wrath of Lich King and, and tier 11. That's when I was like pushing my hardest right. rating. And like, I remember those kills and they were great and they were fantastic. But, you know, the amount I, I like remember that fondly versus how I remember just like, 40 mans and molten core like even just recently mm -hmm. right on certain private servers it, it doesn't even compare like i can recall right. specific jokes like very very specific <laughs> incidents whereas you know the other more i guess prestigious rating accomplishments you kind of just you know forget about them a little bit and um i don't think it's the content that drives wow like it's just right, the right. content is there and it's great and it creates you know experiences but it's really just a vessel for you know a certain amount of people to get together and experience something Right, um right. there's Stay like safe, uh no oh, sorry yeah. yeah go ahead i was just gonna say there's uh there's this new there's this new website i'm not sure what it's called but i'm pretty sure you can do this on twitch now where you can like watch a movie together like on twitch with your chats or something like that i don't know like it's rolling out recently right but basically like the movie is one thing mm -hmm. but the experience of watching something with people is really what drives people to, to like you know to yeah. pursue these types of experiences so yeah, yeah that's like that it. basically Okay. Yeah. What do you, what about you, Stay Safe? What's your favorite? Yeah. Content? Like, I, I, I essentially agree with what Tips has said is the community aspect. And I, I think of, as, was, as Tips was talking, I think of this argument or discussion which game is harder, Classic WoW or BFA? And it's like, I definitely think that BFA has more mechanically challenging aspects, but they're not as fun. And I think the fun is what matters. I All think right. of this, I was watching a really, really good arena multi gladiator streamer the other day, and he was saying, like, it doesn't feel good to be the best in a game that no one cares about. Right. And that's how people feel in BFA. And so, yeah, it, it feels good to be a badass and accomplished and, and have these epic adventures in a game that everyone knows and loves and cares about and know that other people are enjoying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you and, and knowing other people care about your journey and this, the success of this game, like that motivates you to push for a higher level yourself. So that's, I, I agree. I think it's a community thing. Um, I'm totally on board with it. Pretty much what Tip said there. Right, right. Yeah. That's fine. So I'm thinking back on it, and, and this is just kind of like how I am. Uh, I'm a personality. Is I, I really like to, I really like problem solving, and I like to lead. Mm -hmm. So right. be, being in a position where like I'm, I'm leading a guild or leading a raid, and like trying to figure out like okay, like this is our raid. It's it's it is what it is. We have whatever classes we have. Let's figure out what we like. These are the tools that we have. Let's go solve this problem. Uh, I, I really like doing that and just kind of like, okay, like let's have this guy do this, this guy do that. And it's like, sure, you could min-max it and, and have like a more optimized group or whatever. But that's the kind of stuff that's really fun for me is trying to figure out uh, like as a team, as a group, hey guys, what do you guys think we should do here? Hey, so-and-so, like Hunter, can we trust you to go kite this around and do this? Like, again, let's let's recall the uh, SM Armory kill, right? Where it right. was it was me, stay safe, Asman. Uh, there's a hunter there, the mechanic. So, so the hunter, he ended up getting aggro because hunters don't have any, uh, they don't have any glancing blows, right? 
So because hunters don't have any glancing blows, they can hit higher level mobs and not have to worry about doing less damage. So he was basically taking all the threat from Herod and whenever he took all the threat, boom, he sprints all the way up there and it's like, okay, so now you got to drop, right? You got to drop and then you got to cut him back down. And this is basically going to go on over and over again. You have to find a way to, to separate from him. He's going to blades of light and then you're going to have to get away. And then having to put your trust in those people, uh, right. like you guys come up with a plan and then you putting your trust in specific people to be able to like accomplish the task. I, th I think it's so fun. I think that's so cool. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Whatever it so is. All three of those are pretty involved answers, right? Like I ask this question a lot and everyone throws in, well, I like PVP. I like, uh, I like dungeons. I like raiding. I like leveling or soloing. Um, and my answer is always like, well, I tricked you all. You're all wrong. You know, uh, the greatest content in World of Warcraft is you, right? you the players right it's the content is just a reason for you to show up and, and tips alluded to this right perfectly uh, the, the content is just there to get everyone to show up and start interacting with each other and that's where all of the stories come from uh, the stories from you know other games that i've heard are yeah i camped this boss for six hours and i finally got the titan forge perfect you know thing that i wanted and it's like that's not a story right Right. That's just a thing that happened, you know, but that's not, nobody's interested in that story. In fact, they're probably pissed because you got it and they haven't been able to. <laughs> yeah. The real stories are, well, we got together in this group and so-and-so did this crazy thing. And then I made this joke and then, you know, all this stuff, you know, like those interpersonal interact interactions that everyone's having. Right. So the best content in the game is just the people that showed up and started interacting in all the ways that we do as human beings. And again, the content is just there as an excuse to pull you in. And we used to say this about MMO design, you know, and for a while, long term, um, you know, they come for the game and they stay for the social, right? They stay for the community. And that's still so true for a lot of people because um, games that are aged and have gotten to the point where they can't add new content anymore. There's a lot of old MMOs that are still running that haven't added new content in, in years. And there's still people jamming out those games because they, they're they connected to those communities and the things they do and the fun they have every time they log in is still there because of the people. So, um, well, that's on, to add to that, I think that is the reason for the high replayability of vanilla wild private servers, right? You know, every couple of months there's a new vanilla wild private server and people are super eager, e e eager. There's the fresh meme to replay and restart. And it's because it's all, it's all about that social aspect. And there's going to be a new social hierarchy and which guild is going to yeah. gank who and the drama and the friendships and the rivalries. You're totally. Yeah. Absolutely. It's absolutely and, uh, replayable, right? PVP mm -hmm. in, in all its forms, whether it's, you know, arguing, you know, it's, it's, Dreamer drama, <laughs> whatever it is, right? That stuff is ultimately replayable. Um, it'll go on forever. You know, we just need an excuse to be in the same place at the same time and interact. And then everything just flows from there. So, um, absolutely. You know, the, the content is far less important when it comes to it. So, that was our philosophy, you know, setting up WoW is let's make sure that we allow, we create collision, that we allow for these, you know, things to happen good and bad and in a non-utopian way and then let's just watch as people generate stories and get hooked and start you know having a blast mm -hmm. it's it's crazy that you say that kevin because like it seems like that the entire genre has departed from that so quickly like within like a five-year span or even mm -hmm. less i would say like that just completely went out the window as a design philosophy. Why yeah. do you think that happened? Why did this just get abandoned by, you know, the entire genre and also to some extent by, by some of the later WoW expansion developers? Why do you think that happened? Um, so, yeah, we talk about this aspect a lot on my, on my stream. Um, and there's a few ideas. One is that the market right now is really tight. It's, it's sort of risk averse. Um, no one wants to take risks. And so you do what the guy next to you is doing that's already been successful. Hey, loot shooters are very successful. Battle Royales are very successful. Let's do that. Let's not take risks. Um, MMOs are very risky. MMOs are one of the most risky propositions for any company. Right. You know, you think about Blizzard having this giant war chest back in the day, and it did. But if WoW had failed, that company wouldn't be around anymore. Um, that's, that's the bottom line, right? So... Um, they're very risky. People don't want to take risks. So yeah. 
and then also i think as as the developers have aged they've wanted to spend less of their time living in world of warcraft as just the you know byproduct of they've they've been doing it for so long and so they saw ways to streamline the experience um so that they can jump in, do their raid run, you know, log off for the week and do other things with their lives, right? But one of the key components of an MMO is you don't just play this game, you live in this world. This is this is a big part of your life. And mm -hmm. anyone can go make a, a loot shooter, right? It doesn't take much of your life and everything is streamlined for the content. But that's not what an MMO is. MMOs are about being a life, you know, experience. And so I can see that it was an attractive concept that, oh, I'd like to play WoW and have it not take up a lot of my time. And so they tried to steer the game towards that. Right. But ultimately, that's counter to MMO philosophy, right? MMOs are very different from every other genre out there because they require a high level of investment from players. And it rewards you for that investment that deeper investment. So that's one of the keys to making an MMO an MMO. Right. Yeah. I think, I think whenever you move away from the aspect of, uh, time investment, uh, like you, you don't have the same sort of, and it doesn't have to be perfectly linear. Right. But having right. the aspect of, of time investment goes up, like your character's progress, your, your character gets stronger, all that stuff. It's, it's all, it's at least a positive correlation. Right. Whereas uh, right. a lot of times it just, you don't, uh, you at least don't feel it as much whenever you spend a lot of time. Like it might be a lot right off the bat. And then once you get somewhere, it just like plateaus in retail while. Yeah. And you feel like you're not really getting anywhere. And it's just, it's too yeah. fast, right? For you to really appreciate like how, how much your character is developing. I, I'm, I'm way, sitting, I, I just want to say, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about what are like the top vanilla videos from actually back in the day the most famous vanilla videos. And the first one obviously is like the Leroy Jenkins thing, right? Yeah. And this mm -hmm. is a perfect example of it. This is not, th this is a group of people that are screwing up yeah, they fail. and just like, <laughs> they fail, but it's such like a group, you know, it, yeah. it's totally a community thing, More right? Docs. Yeah. It's a failed too, right? The, the yeah. funeral raid, the, the Anixia wipe video. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is this is people not being successful. There's, there's people that yeah. because of people screwing up or a community event, uh, everything's falling apart. And this is the stuff we remember from back then uh, mm -hmm. as being the most notable videos. Yeah. yeah. And when yeah. I say investment to reward, like um, I'm actually not talking about the items you gain and, you know, the rate accomplishments. I'm just talking about participating in the world where all these events occur and you were there, right? Right. You You're were there like when these things almost. happened, you know? I was like here. Every time I read, yeah. I, every time I read a story about Eve online, it's like, man, how crazy would that have been to have been able to be part of that, right? But then you realize, well, I'd have to be a no life or Eve player in order to achieve that, right? So I can't do it. But that's what all of the guys that are there are feeling. They're feeling like, yeah, I was a part of that and it was amazing. And it's because I put in all that time. And that's just a requirement to these kind of things. You want to be part of the, the wow experience? You got to be present. You got to be online. You got to be playing. And it's not to get the items; it's to hopefully have tons and tons of those you know stories and experiences mm -hmm. that we've you know enjoyed over the years watching people's videos. Yeah, yeah. And this even is, uh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, this is like kind of unrelated, but like in the same kind of realm. Like even in real life, um, a friend of mine a while back he went uh, he went on a vacation with his wife, and he was talking to me about it. And they went to um, there's this village in Italy or this town in Italy. It's it's really famous. It's like the blue and white town uh, that I think it's like a really big, like kind of romantic couple spot. I think it's called Santorini or something like that. Um, he was talking to me about it. And like there's all these destinations in that area and there's a lot of different things you can do. And, you know, jet skiing, whatever it may be. It's like it's a really beautiful place. Uh, I'm sorry. It's in Greece. I'm sorry, Greece. My bad. It, it's Greece. Anyways, um, but he was telling me the most enjoyable part of their entire trip was when they went to this lobster restaurant and it was like all you can eat lobster buffet or something like that. And um, something ended up happening where the butter like that they were serving got spilled on his wife and then like they had to clean it up and it was a big thing. And so like the restaurant brought out a bunch of like extra like lobster and crazy dishes and stuff like that. 
I, the whole point of what I'm trying to say is it was it was a trip to a restaurant and they were mm-hmm. in basically paradise on earth where they could do whatever they wanted. So many different act, like activities to do and stuff like that. But the most memorable thing was when they had the mm-hmm. entire restaurant kind of come together and fix this issue where all this butter like got spilled and everything like that. And it was just like this big like atmospheric social experience that happened. Yeah. Absolutely. So like, yeah, like even expanding beyond just, you know, gameplay and stuff like that, people like experiencing things with other people and um especially when they're things that are outside the norm i feel right yeah it's Absolutely. like because you expect to you expect to win right like you you expect mm-hmm. to kill the boss you expect this happens mm-hmm. you expect that happens whenever something unexpected happens that's whenever you remember it well now i expect lobster can we go get some lobster real quick these guys <laughs> that was the whole point of the story let's go, <laughs> yeah. let's go. Okay. oh another good really example the guy who who ninja loots on gar and the, and the guild is on comms and the girl's freaking oh, out yeah, yeah. and that's another really <laughs> perfect yeah. example right yeah. everything goes wrong well and, and and like this this is kind of personal like a... loot fixed all those problems <laughs> people interacting yeah, yeah yeah how dare we have that well also another thing like when it comes to like the the social aspect of it and, and you know you could say uh back then right like i could say back in like 2004 2005 whatever like you're playing wow and like what is the image of a wow player it's like the the neck beard lives in his mom's attic his his room is a complete mess he's I'm just describing Asmongold at this point, but the, <laughs> the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, basically, like you have this image of like the WoW player, and it's like whenever you hear a girl's voice on comps, and then she's freaking out, it just makes it that much funnier. Like, like nowadays, yeah. it's like yeah, whatever. But like back then, especially like I don't know, like you thought of like the South Park WoW guy, and then you see you hear that, it makes it really funny to me. So, oh yeah, yeah, so, so good. So. Has the nostalgia worn off? You guys been playing beta and classic? Are you are you just kind of over it? Is it? I I think that um, <laughs> I think that there's definitely been like a little bit of a drop in hype, maybe as far as like viewership goes, because there's, there's mm-hmm. probably a lot of people who came in and they kind of poked their head and like, what's this? What's this all about? Right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's it's not the full release of the game, and like you're capped at level thirty, you're capped at level forty. There's a, it's funny. There's a limited amount of content you can do. Because yeah. it's not nearly as wide open as there is level 60. However, with that being said, uh, it still seems like there's so much to do that it's still really, really fun. So yeah. maybe it's like a lot of times people look at it and it's like, oh, it's only this level. Oh, it's only that level. But I'm having a lot more fun than I was playing most any other game. You know, I, I would yeah. say over the last year and a half, I don't think I've played... Like GTRP was really fun, but for the same reasons that we talk about classic being fun, it's about the community, right? Yeah. So other than that, like I, I haven't I haven't played another game where I was just like, no, Dark Souls is really fun, but like class, like it's, that's kind of like a different kind of thing. That's like an experience. Mm-hmm. So Let classic this is way. the thing. If if classic was capped at level forty forever, if, if level forty was the highest level and this is all it was ever going to be, um, mm-hmm. I would still play every day. I would just okay. keep playing and and I would just play it every day. Yeah. This this. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think, uh, you know, and you mentioned GTRPS fan, like I feel like classic. Wow. To some extent is very similar to GTRP, mm-hmm. but it's content driven a little bit like and that's really what it comes down to. And, and you know, stay safe mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, the nature of gamers hasn't changed. You know, the con- like 15 years hasn't changed the way we, we, you know, consume games and stuff like that. And I completely agree. Mm-hmm. And I think GTRP is like one of the biggest testaments to that. Mm-hmm. Here's this game. Also, I relatively old i think gta 5 is like what four or five years old something like that five six years old yeah something like that it's old but it comes out with this you know kind of sandboxy you know game mode where you can interact with other people and all of a sudden it's in the top three games on twitch in a generation filled with battle royales mobas looter shooters fast pace you know endorphin driven uh content this game somehow makes it to the top of twitch and it's been there for a while now and it seems to be staying there and I feel like Classic WoW is very similar in that regard. It's a 15-year-old game. It doesn't have the same, you know, endorphin hitting, you know, reward systems and stuff like that. But it's got a great social uh, aspect to it. It incentivizes social interaction. And we're saying the same thing. A beta for a 15-year-old game is constantly in the top five games on Twitch. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And don't forget the experience of looting like a boar to get some intestines and somebody tries to gank you. There's all kinds of brain chemistry going on then. <laughs> you talk about not getting the endorphin, <laughs> <from> looting. <laughs> all depends on context. But yeah, that's uh, that's the thing about that. It's probably one of the saddest elements of this whole class revival 
is that the industry has lost its desire to make these kinds of games that I hope that, you know, the work that we did on WoW could have been the blueprint, you know, for young designers in the next wave mm -hmm. and other companies, you know, trying to step forward and, right. you know, do the next thing, evolve the ideas that we put forward, mm -hmm. forward and expand on the, in the industry. And so let me, well, we have to rely on going back to a 15 year old game. Uh, well, let me, let me ask you this. Find it. Do you think Classic WoW is going to create like a, a gaming design renaissance or whatever you want to call it, where people will see the, the success of Classic WoW? And you, you... I think it's already started. Like, I think, mm -hmm. I think companies have already taken notice of, you know, the build up to Classic. Uh, I think a lot of the old school guys, we look at Pantheon, we look at uh, Camelot Unchained, they saw the market. They saw the market and that there's a need and a desire for a large group of people mm -hmm. that are sick of BFA and sick of loot shooters and battle royales, and they want another classic like experience and they're trying to create it. How much money they'll have. I wish those guys the absolute best. I worry a little bit about the quality of the games because they have to get money to make the best things. Mm -hmm. They have to have time. They have to have great people on the project. All those things take money. And I don't know how much people are willing to risk to give them the money. Right. But, I think eventually it would be ridiculous for someone not to notice that a lot of people are wanting to play a 15 year old game with no new content <laughs> and yeah. pay a lot of money for the privilege to do that because of the game design philosophy. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's an untapped market that people, you know, at some point are going to figure out, yeah, we can make a lot of money if we do, if we do right by it and we make a good thing. Right. Maybe I got to tell you guys, maybe it'll be someone else, but it's, I think there's a lot of reason to be hopeful. I don't know if you guys have gotten this. I've had people DMing me trying to buy beta keys from me. Hey dude, I'll give you $500 <laughs> for a classic beta key. And I'm like, dude, first off, no. Second off, I don't have any. Like third, if I did, no. Like, <laughs> but yeah. it, 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 it lends to your point. Like, yeah, people really want. Them. Yeah. Cause they can yeah. sell it for a thousand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they can flip it. <laughs> uh, oh no it was, well what's even worse than that is, is stay safe left that last part where he just started telling people to ask s fan and it's like yes right, that's did, true did i have i i literally got an email from somebody it was like a dissertation i swear dude this is the longest email ever i was like <laughs> i was looking through the thing and i'm like he was explaining why he deserves to get a beta key right. and like to, to yeah. give him a beta i'm like dude i don't have beta keys like you gotta be kidding me like <laughs> hey, stay safe for you like it the assumption there is that the account's going to come, the, the beta key's going to come with a max level warlock because you just can't help yourself. Right. Like, <laughs> right. So that, you know that's part of the five hundred dollar. Yeah. Yeah. So something else you talked about is like Kevin, your like what your your hope was, and and I'm sure plenty of others as well was that like one of you guys had WoW, one of you guys made WoW, the game comes out and it's like okay, this kind of like is a game that can maybe set the standard for other games to to come in the future, right? Uh, yeah. maybe people can build on it, make better games. One of the things that I always remember throughout the years is there was always a new game coming out, uh, that was supposed to be like the wow killer. Right. And right. you said that like you, you would hope that that's kind of what had happened, but you feel like it didn't happen from my perspective. I, I would say that it kind of did happen, but the problem was, is that these other games would come out and they try to be wow clones. And whenever yeah. you keep trying to make wow clones, like you're not going to beat a game that does the exact same thing that the other game that's already established has been right. doing right uh i mean but you can look at other games like even look at league of legends like the original like runes and masteries and stuff like that like i think it was mm -hmm. called the mastery system it was it was literally the wow talent trees like right. it, it was like right. the same exact thing same exact idea where it's like okay and you're doing like you know five percent more crit chance it's it's yeah. it's so so similar to the original talent trees which is cool it doesn't right? really work in that game right but they right. had to do it <laughs> right um but uh well, but yeah they, were, no, I they think weren't even cool. Go ahead, they go. weren't even WoW clones. They were Wrath. They were WoW clones, but they were the wrong version of WoW clones. Yeah, it was too like, late. Right? Exactly. Well, they, yeah, they yeah. were like so. The biggest, I think, like the biggest kind of generation generational gap of like WoW clones came out. I would say, I mean, you had before you had like Age of Conan and 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 like Aeon and stuff that like was, that. That's when we were like Rift. Yeah, a Rift I think and Age of Conan. Rift. Yeah, like when Rift came out, that was like I think a new era of WoW clone, like just like a two to three year block where there was like a bunch of wild clones that came out right after each other. Yep. And the problem yep. with Rift was 
it was it was pretty much a Wrath of the Lich King clone. It, it, like some of the abilities were pulled directly from WoW. That's how I it, felt. Yep. Yeah, it, it was like they had a, a new talent system where you had like you know you could pick three different trees from three different classes and stuff. But the mm-hmm. base game was pretty much a Wrath of the Lich King clone. And then after that, you had games like Star Wars: The Old Republic, which again was like basically a Wrath of the Lich King clone, Cataclysm well, clone. And and they all kind of cloned the the later exp- later versions of WoW, and I think ultimately that's why they failed. I, I don't know too much about Aeon. I do know with Star Wars: The Old Republic, they the Mythic actually made that game, and I was really excited about that because it was Mythic, and they made Dark Age of Camelot. And, and Kevin, we've right. talked about Dark Age of Camelot before, uh, and I felt like in some ways that that game tried to. I think it tried to take WoW and Dark Age of Camelot and try and meet it in the middle. But then it also had this weird, like, single-player, like, for the players who played, like, you know, the, the Knights of the Old Republic games. Mm-hmm. Like, it tried to, like, mix too many things in at once. And on top of all that, I remember the game being so, like, so taxing on your computer. Like, I, 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 no, couldn't, I couldn't play it. Yeah, like, I don't know if there's something wrong with my computer or what, but I had no problems playing, like, any other game. And then for some reason, Old, Old Republic, I, somebody would whip out a lightsaber and the computer would just, like... It's like zero FPS. Like it was, it was right. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously I love class design and that's why I went that direction when I, you know, had to focus in on something. So every time I jump in a new game, I want to see what are the class designers at other companies doing? You know, what are they trying and what's new and innovative and, you know, what ideas have the wow classes inspired or other games in the you know, industry inspired. And when I went to sweater, it was like, I really wanted to like that game because it was, oh, Star Wars. I love Star Wars, you know, like, let's get into this. But all the abilities felt like just jumbled around versions of the WoW abilities. And I'm like, I've pushed all these buttons a million times because I worked on them. Um, And I just couldn't play, you know, the game because it didn't offer me anything Mm -hmm. in terms of something new for class design. And so I fell off it really quickly. But, and that's always the thing you hope is that, you know, your counterparts essentially in the rest of the industry are doing fun, taking fun risks and being innovative. And, you know, sometimes they're going to fail. Sometimes they're going to succeed, but they're at least trying new things. And when the MMO genre was still kind of fresh, that's where everyone was because we were all sort of working on our games simultaneously. But then once WoW came out and sort of set the standard and also expanded the market so much, that's and then that's when people started the process of making an MMO that was going to replace WoW, mm-hmm. and they would come out four or five years later, and that's when you got that second wave that were all basically WoW clones, um, because they weren't trying to do something new; they were trying to do the exact same thing, but feel the market, thinking everyone's going to be sick of WoW by then. But again, WoW was pretty timeless in its philosophies because. Here we are 15 years later. We're like, yeah, let's jump back in. Let's do this. Right. Yeah. I, I think that uh I think that one of the big things that the people are seeing now too is uh kind of kind of reeling it back a little bit. Uh I mean the the game has obviously changed a lot and people always talk about like class balance and design and stuff. And this is something we, we, we talked about this on the last episode, or not the last episode, mm-hmm. but the last time you, you came and joined us on here. Uh actually you joined us right before BlizzCon, didn't you? Was it right after or right before? I think it was right uh, before. It was before, yeah. Yeah, I think it was right before BlizzCon. Um, but we talked about, like, balance in the game. And it, it seems like every day, and I don't know if you guys get this in your streams as much, but, like, it, it seems like every single day somebody's like, oh, well, what if they balance this? What if they change this class? Or what if they made Boomkins this? Or what if they made Rat Paladin, Prop Paladin, to Taunt? Like, whatever. Like, um, I think one of the things that people are I, – I think that people are kind of starting to get it is that the game is a little bit different than it was back in the day. I mean, look at how much each class changed every single patch leading up to 1.12 and how classic mm-hmm. is going to be a different experience than vanilla was. Even from that standpoint, right? Let's let's take out like the social and this and that and you have streamers now and you have, you know, just, just more access to social things like Discord is way more powerful than ICQ or, or Vent was, right? right. So um, you, you have all these different things that have come into the game. Uh, I, I think people – have you guys noticed this where people are starting to notice some differences? Or maybe maybe it's just that there's people who weren't around back then and they just – it's all hearsay from stories, right? Like we know how much Warlocks changed, for example. Warlocks changed a ton. From, Warlocks were terrible when the game came out. And they were like super strong by the end and like really strong. And like in the Burning Crusade, they, you could argue that they're probably one of the best classes, if not the best. 
in TBC, yeah, in vanilla. Yeah, in TBC. It, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I I have had people ask about the balance thing, and I'm like, yeah, like to, to your point, it's like, yeah, this is the balance version. You should see, you should yeah. see really vanilla. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I think too much balance, like, it, it, guys, sorry. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things, like, uh, just kind of like balance. Balance is just boring really like whenever it comes down to it whenever you have something that ends up being too balanced that's whenever you have like the the current version of the game you know well yeah i mean oftentimes like the lazy way to balance a game is to homogenize all the classes you know Mm -hmm. let's say there was only one class and everyone played the same thing that would be a perfectly balanced game that doesn't mean it would fun like that would not be fun at all if everyone just has the exact same toolkit there's no variety between classes Mm -hmm. so you i i think that in an attempt to make everything one and we've talked about this before but in an attempt to make everything one to one to one balanced like they've sort of done with BFA um, mm-hmm. or working in that direction, you end up with a lot of ability overlaps and skill overlaps. I mean, how many people have battle resist now in, in BFA? How many right. people have bloodlust? How many people have like it, it, it's getting everybody ridiculous. has like a two minute DPS cooldown or something? Like it, yeah, exactly. It's exactly. like come on. Everybody has an interrupt. Everybody ha- yeah, like it's- yeah. Whereas in vanilla WoW, you have it to where. I think almost every class has something that's just seemingly broken, right? It's like, dude, this oh, he did this. Like, you got to be kidding me, right? But yeah. every class has that, and it's so different from what every other class has that in a in a weird way, the the imbalance almost makes it feels like there is balance. And right. uh, it, yeah, it's, it's very very strange. When, when when classes have everything, right? Uh, when they have one of everything, then it's purely mathematical, which is the best class. Um, your, your, your job of balancing the classes becomes so much harder mm-hmm. because in the old days, it's like, you know, I, I even just saw everyone spamming in chat about Boomkins, right? It's like, yeah, Boomkins had trouble, but they had 3% spell crit. So guess what? Shove them in a group of mages <laughs> and everyone's yeah. happy, right? Uh, yeah. And it's like, because he offers that one thing, he can rely on that when his numbers aren't panning out. His math isn't supporting his, you know need to be in the group right but when everyone has everything the map has got to be perfect yeah or else you just toss them because it's like yeah well this guy over here does everything you do he just does it three percent better yeah so it's 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 such a weird trap for them to fall into yeah no it is it is it is pretty cool to see like how um you know, sure, there's people who want to min-max everything, and that's fine. I, I think, like, I think the different ways of playing the game are, are like, I, in my opinion, they're respectable. I, I think as, like, yeah. for example, as, like, a Rep Paladin player or as a Boomkin player, anybody who plays a hybrid, right? It, mm-hmm. It's weird because you're in this weird, r- between a rock and a hard place, where you have to play the game at a level which, like, the guys who are, like, the, the hardcore min-max speedrun guys play it in order to make your class, like, I guess, serviceable for, like, a more, like, maybe a little bit more like of a progression style of a guild or even like a casual guild. Like you have to pop everything you can in order to compete with some of those, those types of players. So now you're like this type of player in this sort of environment. And then you have this, like, it's just like an interesting dichotomy there, but that's just like what you have to do in order to, uh, in order to want to play that class. And I think that's fine because your class right. has other things about them that makes them yeah. special or interesting, right? Like as a paladin, great. Okay. I can still like off heal. I can, uh, if I can tank dungeons and stuff if I wanted to. Like, yeah. th- there's different things I can do, um, and, and, and that's the just kind of like the cost you pay. Are you having fun, right? Yeah, exactly. If you're, if you're a spec that's not the ultimate spec for raiding, you know, the specific boss that we're progressing through at this moment, are you still having fun? Like, do you yeah. and your buddies still cruise around and do whatever and have a good time? Yeah. Does a play style suit you? You know, like that's the other thing with pushing people ever everyone into progression raiding. Um, is that it's not for everyone. It limits some people's ability to just have fun running around with their buddies playing the thing, right? It's like we yeah. all have to be progression, spec viability minded, you know, in order to mm-hmm. get joy out of this game. And that's just not for everyone. Yeah. And it should be, it should be for a very select group of people. Yeah. And I think that's cool. Like like different type of, different types of people want to play the game different types of ways. So mm-hmm. that's uh, that's one of the things I think is 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 really important to kind of try and. Um, be very honest about. I think. I think that's the right. point. So, um, so yeah. I think with uh, as far as like, let's, let's talk a little bit more about your your beta experience so far. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed anything? Um, let's say, like, have you noticed any like glaring like differences or uh, 
not necessarily bugs, but little things that just feel different or things that you didn't remember. Uh, maybe from back in the day and you, you got in there and you're like, oh, like I know you mentioned how like the, the harvest golems, you couldn't uh, drain life them. Right. Yeah. But like anything like anything else along those lines. Uh, nothing like specific. Like I've sent in a few bug reports here and there, but uh, most of them are just little environmental things that they're not like big game design issues. Mm -hmm. um, but it, but it's felt very authentic. It's felt like because I've I've leveled those characters in those zones so many times like you guys have no idea yeah. <laughs> how much play testing we did back in the day yeah um, and so i know a lot of that stuff but you know back of my hand and it felt it feels really authentic it feels like the vanilla experience so um in terms of you know people that aren't playing and, and worry about that kind of thing you shouldn't because for the most part it is very authentic feeling mm -hmm. so yeah that, i mean and that's cool like I, I think that's good to hear um have you one of, one of the big things that i i know for me that i felt is like the the spell bashing and this mm -hmm. is something we we actually talked about this on classic cast after uh spell bashing was announced so it's something we had talked about prior to it too um and what one of my concerns was is that like the spell bashing just because of how like networks work and it, how how everything works on the back end that they might right. try and implement spell bashing like simulate it in a way that makes it actually feel like not right maybe even worse uh i know a lot of people who have been like complaining about maybe the batch window being even too big do you notice anything like that like it just sometimes like the game feels laggier because of it um i haven't felt it though you know to be fair i haven't played enough of modern wow to really know yeah. to be able to compare side by side spell batching versus not. So mm -hmm. uh, spell batching was after my time. Yeah. But I can, again, I can say like the feel of it feels pretty good. I haven't gotten into a lot of PVP. So, you know, that's where I think most people are noticing spell batching is in yeah. their various right. PVP interactions. So right. again, like I don't, I, I'm not informed enough to be able to say it's working. It's not working. It feels weird. It feels perfect. Right. Yeah, and, and maybe it's like it's also a product of maybe like people haven't played on private servers more recently, uh, right. feeling like things are a little bit off. Um, it just feels to me like the the window, and and state seven tips. You guys can can maybe get, give some thoughts on this. It feels to me like the the window for the the batch window. It's just maybe a little bit too big. Whether that's because people maybe have like better internet now and like the batch window is exactly what it was in the past, but because people just typically have faster internet. It feels right. much bigger, you know, it's, it's maybe it's just one of those things too. So absolutely. Like, again, it's hard to say because we haven't played vanilla since it was out technically. And like mm -hmm. you said, as fan, like the internet, uh, you know, and our expectations as players dealing with modern wow and like on private servers, it's, it's got its own kind of spell batching loop. So it's hard to say what it was, but I, I mean, in terms of like gameplay, like just strictly design, um, it just it's really frustrating when you clearly interrupt uh, a shaman who's healing or a mage who's polymorphing you clearly interrupt them and then like 0 0.3 0 0.4 seconds later you know the cast still goes off and it's like hmm. yeah. uh you know like i understand spell batching was in the game and obviously because it was in the game it should be in the game today but it's the, the difficulty with spell batching is you have no control to measure it against um and right. we have no idea really how blizzard is implementing it i mean to my knowledge, maybe the implementation is off. It could be off. I, I don't know. But it does not feel good. Like, it, it creates counterplay, but it also creates a lot of negative experiences as it is right now Yeah. Um, versus how it is on private servers. Well, yeah, that I, doesn't sound like a spell batch experience, um, the interrupt thing. I mean, our interrupts were timed or tuned pretty well. Yeah. Get that feeling. I push this button at the right time. It's going to work because it was, it was so... Um, you know, some of your windows for interruption were so small that we had to make sure it was extremely responsive. So, yeah, um, yeah. that's an interesting, you know, thing that you're feeling. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how the technical side of it, but it sounds like, and people in the chat, if they're like server engineers or whatever, they might be able to help with this. But it sounds like the way Blizzard implemented it was they said they, they let the server run on like an extra loop or something like that. That's how they described it in the in the blue post. And that's how they're like okay. kind of, you know, implementing the batching. It's kind of like a simulated version of batching. But right. uh, what I, what yeah, I think is happening, maybe I'm wrong. What I think is happening is like you have 
uh, you basically have all the events that are occurring, right? Like da -da 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 -da, all the events are occurring and it's like on one timeline and then there's like a second timeline that basically takes everything that happens in this block of time and makes it occur at this exact moment. So it makes everything right. go through exactly. once. Everything right. go through at once. Everything go through yeah. at once. Yeah, the interrupt should be outside of that loop. Interrupt yeah. shouldn't be like it's it's one thing to like double polymorph each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, interrupt should be, you know, it should just check to see if the if the command comes in before the result, then cancel the result. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. that's my fear right now. My fear. I is think they put too many things in that everything. same. Yeah. 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 So like, uh, cause the same thing happened with, uh, like we've, we've noticed the same thing with like Warsong Gold's flag pickups where it's like, well, so-and-so has returned the flag to the base and then like a Horde and Alliance player click the flag at the same time in the same batch window. And then it says they returned it and then it says they picked it up. It's, it gives you both messages and then mm -hmm. it makes the, uh, like Alliance player pick it back up or the Horde player pick it back up. Yeah. As opposed to returning There's that. It. I, I think that probably like the number one way that this is manifesting on the beta is when people are looting monsters. Who here has been playing the beta and you'll right click loot a monster and you might have auto loot on. The window will just be like, you won't even see it. It'll just be like, just there a for blink, yeah. hundred, just a blink. Other times you'll actually see it before the items are put in your bag. Um, I think that's because the loot, you're catching the loot under on the front of the back end of the batch window, right? I think that's like the most common way it's manifesting. Of course, the PvP thing. I, I feel like the window is a little bit big. Like I know if I'm PvPing against another Warlock, there is a very high chance we are going to fear each other at the same time. Like it, it feels like it happens right. all the time. Yeah. It feels like it happens all the time. With a mage, I'm going to get this mage in a fear and I'll be polyed also. Yeah, it happens It happens too often. Like uh, right. it, it's less of a, uh, you know, people, and I said this before, like people act like it's a huge skill thing. Right, where it's like, oh man, I, I'm like rank 14. You know, I I held rank 14 for like seven months in vanilla. Like, and they just act like they're some kind of like crazy player, and they're like that good at the game. But it's it, sometimes some of this stuff just ha kind of happens like out of luck. Like, it, it's not supposed to be that often where you see a, a a rogue gouge somebody's blink. That's the example that people use a lot of times because of a PvP video. You know, uh, people people use certain examples over and over again because they see it in like a very popular old school PvP video. Um, right. so that, what, you know, what do you guys think? Should they continue trying to polish spell batching, or should I, I think they should polish it? That, that's that's my big thing. I, I think they should polish it. Like I, I don't think they should just get rid of it altogether. Um, I, I do think it's something that was part of the game in vanilla, and even if it was used to kind of like make up for uh, this, is, I was under the assumption that it was initially used to to make up for people having like varying, uh, I guess levels of, of internet speed right back in the day like there was a pretty big like right. not everybody has the best internet in the world nowadays but i would say that typically people's internet now is much better than it was back in the day or i, I would say like the range of like really bad internet to good internet is smaller than mm -hmm. back then right well and kevin you raised an interesting idea should certain things be off the batch or worth certain things off the batch like you know maybe yeah. looting or maybe you know kicking a spell right should right, the right. I, I i don't know i just don't yeah. know let's maybe that's something that they should check yeah like is is damage yeah, it's definitely things they can tune you know because i mean interrupts are their their mechanic their purpose is so specific that it has to be polished to the point where it's really responsive mm -hmm. right because every time you push the button and it's like tips was saying it's it's pretty obvious you, you push the button during the cast bar yeah. And it doesn't yeah. result. It's just going to feel like a bug every time. Yep. And it's just going to be this annoying thing we have to live with that there's a 50% chance that my interrupts when skillfully applied don't work, you know? Right, right. Yeah, and that exactly. just seems like an unacceptable environment, right? Right. Absolutely. So, yeah, stuff like that has to be polished. But um, yeah. yeah, it is an interesting question because they are trying to fabricate a thing that doesn't come to the servers naturally. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's this artificial thing that they're having to build from scratch. I would and almost yeah, like to see it without it. Take some polishing. I would just like to see them just pull spell, spell bashing out for like three or four days and just see what happens. Just test drive it. Yeah, yeah, yeah just test it. I still think it should I'd be, be in there. In that too. Yeah, but I think that would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give everyone an actual, you know, classic experience with them spell batching and see if people prefer it. Yeah. yeah. Now another one is. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, how you're having problems with judgment. Yeah, I was talking about damage being on the batch, but that's what I was actually going to say. Uh, like. Mm -hmm. Do you do you remember if if damage and healing was batched? I don't. Um, I remember judgment was a very heavily scripted thing, yeah. and so 
anything that we did that was scripted had the potential to be slightly delayed was my feeling. Yeah. Not always, but it had that potential. Right. Um, because it wasn't in, you know, the core code base. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, the processors are so fast now that it's like, there really shouldn't be any difference in terms of, you know, um, like running a script or running code. <laughs> right. So, mm. uh, even back then it was like, I still don't understand why there's a delay here. It's just a few lines of code. So, yeah. Cause I've but, noticed uh, that, uh, yeah. Uh, just, I've noticed, I remember there was a minor delay on judgment, very minor, like almost, almost like you mm -hmm. couldn't even see it. And I, I watched videos to like double check this. Uh, cause I, I didn't even remember it. I watched videos, uh, and then to just double check it. And it looks like there was a very, very minor delay. It seems so much longer in the beta. Like it's, it's insanely longer. Right. It, seems, it feels like to me, it feels like an eternity. Uh, the same yeah, thing yeah. with like seal of righteousness, uh, Seal of Righteousness, whenever you attack melee, Seal of Righteousness damage would come in uh, in the next batch every single time on the beta. But I don't right. know. I don't I don't remember or know if that was the case. In, well, uh, I'm about to get my Firestone in beta with my Warlock. Oh, so yeah, you can test it. Yeah. So, there yeah, you go. We'll, we'll find out. You we'll can find out with Firestone, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's so, a new meta. Yeah. 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 I'm, dude, I'm actually going to make a, a melee warlock PvP video. I'm really excited. I'm going to set it all up. Oh, yeah. The whole thing I'm going to do. It's going to be badass. Yeah. The stacks are standing. I needed that spellstone today against those Defias pillagers. Holy cow. Right. <laughs> I can't wait. Can't wait to get that. Go back and show those pillagers what's up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think all this stuff is just like very interesting to to think about and look at. Like, I, I would like to see them like. Uh, I feel like they've been pretty active with like making uh, making little fixes here and there. Uh, and, and one of the things whenever we talked to, uh, I got a chance to talk to Brian. No, I talked to Omar about this actually. Uh, and Omar was saying that like the, it's it's not like it was back in the day, where. They the servers bring everything down. Okay, guys, it's Tuesday morning. We're not gonna play for like eight hours, and then we're gonna get everything uploaded, right? Uh, right. Now they can like, push stuff out like a lot more easily, so they don't mm -hmm. even have to take the servers down or whatever. Like sometimes the ser well the yeah. servers might like restart, and then we're good. Like the uh, yeah, they'll... we had all kind of, we had different levels of that back in the day too. Like yeah. you could do live hot fixes and restart server hot fixes, and mm -hmm. we're just like shut it down. We got a whole new yeah. set of code. Yeah, so it's been it. It has been good, like just noticing like them like fixing things like progressively. So, um, so yeah, guys, real quick. Um, again, just just in case you guys didn't know who Kevin is, Kevin is uh, he's one of the original Vanilla WoW class designers. Uh, who he worked on WoW from from Vanilla Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King, uh, and he's been streaming on Twitch. So you guys should definitely go follow Kevin, Kevin Jordan. And, uh, of course, follow tips, follow stay safe. Everybody's handles and all that stuff is on the screen right there. Um, also, real quick, we are uh, uh, we just signed a deal and uh, we just signed a sponsorship with Displate. So uh, if you guys are interested in Displate type stuff, they do like metal posters. Uh, we'll be doing like custom. Uh, we'll probably make like a custom classic cast Displate at some point. But they got metal posters like this. So very exciting. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, yeah, explanation with Displate, you guys can... Check that whole thing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre-nerf Jaina. Yeah, pre-nerf Jaina. As you guys can see, uh, a lot of people are very <laughs> excited about pre-nerf Jaina. Yeah, she's great. Um, yeah, let's put that right there. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, uh, that's that's kind of what we have going on. And yeah, we'll be doing we'll be doing Q and A as well. Uh, we'll be doing a Q and a, a Q and A as well in a little bit. Um, yeah, of course. So what else? Um, do you have any? Do you have any other goals? You're, you're what level are you right now, Kevin? I think you're 17, 18 right now. Seventeen, yeah. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nice. My goal nice. is to have enough money to buy all my new spells. We'll see how that goes. I've been uh, wasting money on Curse of Weakness. <laughs> yes, so, that is a waste. Uh, That's not part know. of the leveling package for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm There's a couple things I'm saving for the first time a rogue jumps me. I Curse of Weakness, and I got my wax candle. That's gonna fairy fire. Right, so nice. You do not want to jump me because I'm ready. I'm ready for the level forty rogues in Westfall. Mm -hmm. The other thing I haven't seen enough of is I haven't been beaten to death with a staff of Jordan yet. Yeah, um, Rick has one. So, 
A lot of people are getting those. Yeah, I'm really jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Has Pendulum of Doom dropped yet? I wasn't on today. Has Pendulum of Doom dropped? I don't think so. I got a Dazzling Longsword while I was farming Older Man, but I don't have a Pendulum of Doom. So, yeah. I did send you a gift today, yes, man. I did get that. The the mall. I did. I was going to say, you sent me a level four great two handed mace. Yeah. Yeah, very good. It's a big upgrade for me. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't send it COD, otherwise I would have. So you owe me. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe like five or six gold for that is probably yeah, uh, the that's right fair. value. So. That's fair. Yeah. No, it's, it's been pretty cool to see. Like how – how um, it, that's what I, I think has been really, really fun about this beta is, you know, at first it was level 30, now it's level 40. Uh, seeing how like this meta has kind of evolved – out of these level caps where like everybody's yeah. focused on like doing certain things at level 30 doing certain yeah, things level it. 40 it's been really cool like it's something nobody has ever experienced before and i would say the closest is actually back in the day whenever battlegrounds were initially released uh mm-hmm. the level caps were like 30 40 yeah, so on twinks. yeah the original twinks they were 30 i remember i had like a 30 rogue and then they mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you guys updated it to make it 29 39 so on and i was like i was so pissed because i had like just gotten like all my gear <laughs> I think right. I had just gotten like uh, what was the sword? I think it was like, like zealot blades or something, like zealot blade and whatever. Um, yeah, like I, I had just gotten those, so it was. Uh, I was like so pissed because I was like, dude, you gotta be kidding me! Like I had just gotten this. Well, that's you know, that's exactly why we changed it, which because you got that sword and we knew. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The less fan, it's gonna tear it up. <laughs> right, it's right. Better. Hmm. No. It- out. Well, and, and it's like, and sure, it was it was a level twenty nine sword, but my character was already level thirty, and I had already equipped it, and that was that was like one of those things, like somebody right. said, yeah. So it was. Just so I, I guess, uh, speaking of meta, Tips had a dual tournament the other day, mm-hmm. and it actually was badass. Um, there were some griefers, mm-hmm. there were some people sitting on totems, and this brought up this whole debate of what is griefing or what is in game harassment, what qualifies that. If it does qualify, what should Blizzard do? Should, should there be different rule sets on PvE servers and PvP servers? Right. Kevin, you're, you're aware of the situation. For anyone that doesn't know what happened, there were some level one Torrens that were sitting on people's totems and jumping and sitting on the duelists themselves. How would this have been handled in Vanilla WoW back in the day? Uh, so we actually, the game designers, myself included, set a lot of policy for the GMs to... Um, in act in fact it was so funny because one of my viewers friends got their name changed and they the the gm designed or the gm explained the policy as had been laid down by some of the original game designers so he sort of threw my words or tried to as to the justification of why (laughs) the name was changed of course he totally missed the, the point of it and change the name when he shouldn't have. But I thought it was funny that they were still sort of trying to adhere to original philosophies that we had put it forward back in the day. Um, because I had a, I had some background in customer service, right? Because I was tech support before. And so they would ping me about, you know, how do we handle these situations? How do we um, deal with people, you know, misbehaving or whatever in the game? Um, and my policy was always do is very the absolute minimum when it comes to interacting with players, interacting with each other. We created the game not to be a utopia, right? We made it so bad things could happen and good things could happen um, in order to create a rich social, you know, tapestry, right? Let yeah. people be themselves for the most part. So, because that's part of the human experience, right? The human experience is. Just like in real life, there's people you can't stand and there's people that you love, right? Yep. So we wanted all those things to happen. And so don't let the game stand in the way of creating these powerful social experiences. And and also do the least possible because um, a lot of times it's up to the judgment of a GM on what type of action to take. And once you get you find yourself in that position and because gms are human beings they're going to make all kinds of crazy decisions so it's going to come it's going to be really inconsistent if you just kind of leave it up to people right and consistency is really important when it comes to this kind of thing right Mm -hmm. um so we always cautioned you know if if it ever possible 
don't do anything essentially and only do things when you absolutely have to right mm -hmm. so the things we always felt what is griefing what has to be you know addressed are people using exploits you know teleport hacks they're cheating in some way um you know things like that that's of course a big one um but a lot of the other stuff that just makes for feel bad moments like i was killing a thing and a guy jumped me and killed me that's part of the game right mm -hmm. that stuff's all part of the game even if he camps menethil harbor all day <laughs> and you know like the solutions to that are within the social realm you know to handle right you you let everybody know in the zone in your guild in general chat and trade chat if you want hey this guy's camping menethil again who didn't want a piece of that guy who didn't know about the bounty on his head right right you know if he's doing it there's going to be rewards for killing him and people are going to want to go hunt him down so just make them aware of it and before you know it you're getting through menethil because you got a million people out there looking for this guy right so yeah um the answers are there right the answers are social um and let players you know figure that stuff out so yeah i think like uh I, I mostly agree with that. Like, I don't think that the player should be banned or anything for that. I think that's part of the game. Like, you kind of got to let the kids play. Um, but I, I think that if it gets to the point where uh, if it is a real issue, uh, I wouldn't mm -hmm. be opposed to, like, you know, and I think all this stuff is subjective. Like, if it gets to the point where, right. like, hey, dude, like, you got to chill. Like, just, just if it's, I mean, I'm maybe, like, in any sort of situation like this, and I've seen it before where somebody made their character really big. They did, like, you know, the elixir of... Uh, uh, what, what's it called? Right. Elixir of Ogre Strength or whatever it was called. The the one that makes them bigger. Winterfall, yep. Fire, Water, all that stuff. Uh, and then they're really big and then they like they sit on the Flight Master and then nobody can fly out. And it's like where people right. are like, okay, dude, like you got to chill. You got to move. And if they don't move, okay, we're going to move you, right? right I've seen right. that. Like I don't think you should like ban somebody for that. Like, And to be honest, like it's mm -hmm. kind of funny. If, it, if, they, if you do it for a few minutes, it's kind of funny because it's like, okay, like look what I can do. But then like if it gets to the point where it's like, okay, you're doing this for an hour, half an hour or something like that. Right. Then okay, let's just let's scoot you over and let people like leave the city. Like that's fine. Yeah, but you know, on the other hand, like we allowed those guys to be killed. You know, yeah, we made, made it very difficult to kill them, but we allowed for those guys to be killed. That's a moment too. Someone killed the Red Ridge, you know, flight yeah. master, and now everyone's kind of stranded. <laughs> yeah, know, that's like, true. That's, actually, that's, that's kind point. of a fun moment, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, it's a really yeah, good if, point. If if, so, as an alliance member, if I'm raiding a horde, a horde town crossroads, the first thing we do kill the flight master. Yeah. That's the first thing that we do, because um, that's that's the biggest grief we possibly can do. So yeah, that's right. That's in the same vein as yeah. Uh, and he'll respawn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not like you're you're out for a week, right? Or whatever. Yeah, it's like, it's so, like five minutes or something. You know, again, right? it's, it's a manageable problem, right? Like yeah. you know, people tend to think, and and this is definitely true in BFA that their time is too valuable to allow these kinds of things to occur. But to us, like that that was part of the experience. You know, you. Mm -hmm having to spend time to do these things you having to find you know ways around little inconveniences that hit your time that was part of the experience so yeah um, i mean my, i guess like my answer and obviously it's not my call but if someone was super large and sat on the flight path i would say just go run just go run to right. a different flight path. <laughs> just go run, yeah. that's, right. that's what i would say yeah just go run. yeah i mean like you, right. you gotta you gotta figure something out like a lot of times like and this is it's almost like a life thing is like you got to not everything is going to be favorable to you. Right. And you got to figure right. out a solution and whether it's like a community thing or not. Right. Like, uh, I know there's this big meme going on about like a blacklist or whatever. And it's like, look back in the day, I can tell you, I, I played on Illidan and then I transferred to Keldazad at the end of vanilla. Like how, how familiar, Kevin, how familiar are you with, with the Illidan U S server? Uh, not very. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, there were a few servers that were high profile back in the day, but I yeah. didn't really know. So, so Illidan, no. they, they literally had a, they, Illidan had so much drama on it that they made an off like platform, like forum. They made a website called illadrama.com where people started using illadrama instead of the official wow forums because they didn't have to worry about blizzard moderation and getting in trouble with their like wow counts and stuff. <laughs> right. So, right. yeah. So like with Illidrama and of course Illidan, the the Serenity now, like the funeral raid, like that that whole thing yeah. that happened on Illidan. You had Blood Legion, Team Ice, you had Die there, like you had really big guilds there. Uh, and like one of the big memes on the server was the Die blacklist. I mean, the right. like, and, and it was, you know, it was well known, like, okay, 
anybody who associates with like Blood Legion or this guild or that guild, like you're on the blacklist and like Grey Ridge is their guild. Like I, I, I very specifically remember like this type of stuff happening and, and people had, Illidan still has drama. Yeah, maybe, probably actually. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, like the, the idea of a blacklist or like people that you didn't want to group with or didn't want to do stuff with, like that was there. And that's like part of the community aspect of the game. Yeah. Those can just be, I mean, whether or not those systems work or not, that's the, the community trying to police itself, trying to put it together tools to manage these situations. And for Blizzard's part, I usually took the stance that that's where we should leave these things. Put, you know, allow the players to try to figure this out, solve it themselves, you know, because mm -hmm. people are creative and we're all very yeah. social animals, right? So a lot of us are going to, you know, punish that kind of behavior. So. Yeah. So like, and it's one of those things where it's like, it, that's just leave it up to the community. Like let, let players handle this. Like if somebody is being, if somebody's being a, a dick, then like you just, you can let people in your guild know, Hey man, this guy's a ninja, yeah. this guy's this or that. And like, that's yeah. their thing. Right. I think, I think it can get to the point where it's kind of absurd personally, mm -hmm. but like, you know, you'll see the and same thing. Design can step in, in those cases. Like you'll notice that the bankers are behind the bars so that there's no way to block them. You'll notice right. that. Uh, the auction house guys are all, you know, up on pedestals, you know, to help, so you to can help at least... people be able to interact with them, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So there are there are game design solutions to some of this stuff, right? And game design can step in, but um, it's it's really difficult to create a policy where GMs are s stepping in on this stuff frequently, and it's it's even harder to sustain that sort of police enforcement of little yeah. things like that, um, and uh, because of the way you know, human nature is the more attention that's brought to it, the more people do it actually in a lot of cases, especially if you don't ban them, right? If all you do is a little slap on the wrist, you'll see a lot of people, you know, testing those limits all the time mm -hmm. now because that's part of the game for them is how right. far can they grief people? You know, how far can they abuse the system before they get slapped on the wrist? Right. Yeah, I think I think that's certainly part of it. Is uh... so you're saying like in in general, if there was like an in-game solution to the problem through some sort of social means, that in general just like sort of let it be, you know, like yeah. sort of hands off with the gyms. Yeah, there's obviously extreme cases. Um, right. You know, like uh, in Ultima Online, this this was a huge issue, and they couldn't police anything. They didn't have the staff. There were a million bugs in the game and a million ways to exploit everything, um, and so people did. And so that was one big problem and they were chasing all of that. There was duping and, you know, that's where their focuses were, um, focus was. Um, but then there were also people just misbehaving, right? Like you would, you would not only kill someone in Ultima Online, then you would emote all of these racist, you know, sexual things on top of it. Right. And that's when it crossed the line, right? And it's like, okay, well now a community service person has to step in and, you know, deal with this player, right? Right. Uh, so there are places where stuff, you know, gets out of hand, but generally speaking, people, you know, using in-game mechanics to do the very things that you've allowed them to do, it, it ends up feeling like an entrapment, you know, where it's like, hey, we're going to allow you to kill people and then we're going to ban you because you killed somebody too much. It feels yeah. really bad. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to create that second get that like self second guess of somebody playing the game and right. wait a minute should I kill this guy or would that be considered griefing and stuff right, like that right. and um, yeah well I'll tell you like the experience we had so so this was the second dueling tournament that I hosted um, I hosted one during the BlizzCon demo and uh, both of them had kind of a I mean I guess the griefing was basically the same it was somebody standing on top of the duelers and right. you know obviously when you're when you're playing that when you're actually like live and doing it and casting you know you're under the pressure and stuff like that so it gets to you at least it did the first time the second time it didn't get to me very much the only the only thing that really made it kind of a problem was um was kind of how the 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 competitors viewed it the competitors were obviously very upset because they were competing mm -hmm. and you know there was a specific case where one of the tauren was sitting on one of the totems which basically caused the priest to lose that duel because he wasn't able to click down the totem which meant you know that was a tremor totem i think and which meant the shaman was able to uh you know to get out of the fear really quickly or something like that but i think the bottom line i said this during the tournament i would i would rather live in a world where people didn't have to feel self-conscious about you know their actions they take in a game mm -hmm. um you know then feel you know just completely in fear of oh my god you know 
if I, if I do this, you know, for five minutes, is that a ban? Is 10 minutes a ban? Where's the threshold? Right. You know, how long can I kill somebody? How long can I do this? So I think ultimately just the fact that we're speaking about it today and the fact that it's been spoken about, you know, over the past week or so shows that this is part of the experience. I mean, if this guy hadn't griefed the tournament, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. You know, yeah. Stay safe wouldn't have debated Asman the other day, I think. And, you know, Soda Pop wouldn't have talked about it on stream. So it, it does create, you know, like you said, Kevin, that social tapestry and it, it creates a memory. And right. uh, memories aren't always good, but, you know, looking back on things in hindsight, it's fun to talk about them. So I think specifically when it comes to dueling tournaments, uh, I think Blizzard kind of has to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, d does Blizzard want to support dueling tournaments? Is this something that is fun just because it's, you know, a bunch of streamers getting involved? Or is there something right. here potentially for Classic WoW? And uh, if they do want to support something like this and, and they want to turn it into a, like an actual competitive thing, then maybe something like Tournament Realms, you know, could be a possibility. But in terms right. of in-game, you know, I I do think the TOS should be enforced. But again, you don't want to create that situation where somebody restricts themselves from doing what they normally would have done, you know, in terms of gameplay because they're scared that, you know, something might happen to them. Yeah, and there, there's a couple things I would add to those statements. One is, um, from a philosophical standpoint, as a game designer, um, I don't consider you... I don't consider your needs over yep. um, the guy next to you, right? I don't care how many dueling tournaments you've won or how you know how far you've gotten in a tournament. Your you know your privileges in terms of playing this game are no different than Troll God X's in terms of <laughs> like where you can be and where you can stand, right? Kevin, but, yeah. God bless you, dude. Yeah. I think a lot of people. I one hundred percent agree. You know. Yeah, and, and that, so. of course, applies to streamers, right? Streamers yep. don't get special privileges either, right? Like, yeah. you're just a guy trying to, you know, play the game, have fun, organize things, right? Yep. Um, there's no there's no special privileges, right? Like, you're all just people in this world, right? So we have to sort of step back as players, especially for high profile, and realize, you know, the, it's not for us necessarily. It's not just for us. It's for everybody involved. Um, the second thing I'll say is... Um, it's so great that this stuff has happened. You know, people complain about streamers getting keys, you know, and getting into the game over other people. But it's like, this is important stuff to test. It's important that streamer run events have occurred and have created these situations that Blizzard has to look in. And it, it, it's something that has to be tested and they have to figure out how they're going to deal with this. They have to set the tone now. Mm -hmm. So that when retail comes along, you know, and it's actually out for good, not retail, I don't use that word, but classic release is finally out, mm -hmm. you know, that they know how to deal with these things, uh, test the waters now, figure out what issues arise. And this is important stuff to test. So um, they're having to figure it out, just like we're talking about it. They're talking about it, too. And it's really important that they set the stance now and figure out how it's going to work because they don't want to be scrambling after retail or after yeah. um, the release yeah you raised a really good point uh before we went live we were talking about this how blizzard needs to beta test essentially how streamers impact a server so yeah. having streamers on the beta playing and having big events and dual tournaments and giant world vs world battles they they lead they like i said they need to beta test how are streamers actually interacting and right. and organizing players and impacting server i think that's something that I hadn't thought of, but that's actually a very good point as well. Yeah. Well, streamers, streamers are a reality, whether or not people like yeah, it, right? And it wasn't a reality back in vanilla. So this is a exactly. very new thing that, and streamers are going to get, get, get up to all kinds of shenanigans, right? right. So we yeah. have to, you know, this is a great test bed for what people are going to do mm -hmm. and how Blizzard's going to, you know, deal with that. So, well, I think another thing, and I had somebody message me about this, right? Is, is you have like a streamer with X amount of viewers watching them. Right, that's so many sets of eyes on the game without actually mm -hmm. them playing the game themselves, and like, uh, and right. and this could very well be a thing for Blizzard is they're worried about like killing hype for the game by by putting right. too many people in or whatever, right? So now you get the benefit of having so many people look at something while mm -hmm. uh, w without having to actually give out so much access to the game. I think that. Uh, I, I've been pretty vocal about this. I really, really want them to add more people, like for a number of reasons, right. right? The the beta itself would be more fun if there was more people playing. If you have more people playing, you can test more things. Um, mm -hmm. I do think that, and, and I've noticed this in chat, is like 
so they'll see something that's bugged and oh oh report 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 and it's like i've already reported this and then they complain that streamers don't report anything it's like no like i, I reported right. this the first time i saw it like recently people are like oh like no key ring like s fan doesn't have a key ring but he has a scarlet key i'm like dude like this is like one of the first things i noticed like the, the, the there was no mm-hmm. key ring uh and I, and I reported it so because i because I, I mentioned it whenever uh whenever we actually went to irvine and and did like the internal thing right uh we, right. we did yep. yeah stay safe and i did sm library and we literally were sitting next to each other and we we're talking about it we we're like oh look there's no key ring and then i think it was added in 1.11 uh from what we saw so maybe i'm wrong on that i think it was 1.11 so it should be in there um so yeah like hopefully they're gonna fix that and they're gonna add the key ring soon but maybe they see it as like oh well if they have too many beta invites it's just they're gonna have to go through more like dead reports or like reports that right. they've already like addressed I don't know. I, I, I wish that they would add like a thousand more people to the beta. I think it would be yeah. a lot better. I, I think an, another wave would be good, at least. Um, I think that they should invite enough people to fill a second server of each type, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the PvE server is completely of, dead. Yeah, no I think a lot of streamers uh, won't remake their characters, right? They'll, still, they'll keep playing on the server they're on. So uh, the second servers might end up being, you know, streamerless for the most part. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that they should be looking at. They should be looking at how do, how do servers, you know, function? How do they, you know, stay? And you know, how quick do people jet out? You know, or get tired of it potentially? Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a whole other thing well, to test there, right? For community, you know, migration purposes, right? So I'll tell you this: early on, when the beta came out, was it four weeks ago or three weeks ago? Now there were a bunch of people I leveled with and did dungeons with, and you know, saw running around the world. I haven't mm-hmm. seen them on in weeks. Like there's a lot yeah, of people right. that got beta yeah. access early. They've not touched it in weeks. They're not right, testing right. anything. Like there's people like I, I saw multiple people. I just went through and I I sorted it by days since they logged mm-hmm. in. We saw like maybe nine days, like eleven days. Yeah. People haven't logged in. They're just sitting yeah. on like a level thirty hunter or something. And it's like, right. dude, really? Like you have beta access. Like play the beta and like at least help test some right, stuff. Right. So that that's yeah, something that's, that's like frustrating too. Is like that's pretty common for betas, but yeah, yeah, it is frustrating. Yeah, there's people uh, here right now. That's like why I've got it open. 15 yeah, that's days why, plus. That's why people, um, that's why you keep adding, you know, you yeah. keep adding to the for backfill, yeah. you know, get new people in. But, uh, you know, here's the good news. Like Blizzard did send me like a hundred keys. I used one for myself and then I sent the others to S fans. So no, false. you guys all yeah. know <laughs> where to get beta keys. You need uh, I wish, I, mean, I wish. Dude, like, you know the clickbait? time for S fans. The easy really clickbait, dude. Money where his mouth is. Easy so, clickbait. You know, he can, he can get you in, you know, like all you gotta do is ask nicely from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Just ask nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I no, I, I wish. Wrong about that. It could be wrong. Yeah, I wish. I wish. My information's not always accurate. Yeah. Oh, well, here's the thing. How, how much you bet? Like, if, if let's say Blizzard actually did something like that, right? Oh, streamer privilege. Why'd they give streamers beta keys to give out to people? And it's like, okay, dude. Like, right. I, I, like at what point? I was like, come on. Like, at what point? Like, yeah. I wish they gave us beta keys. I would totally give beta keys out to people. Beta so. keys. That's a classic concept, isn't it? 2004 <laughs> concept. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually yeah. a key. That yeah, you actually punch a key they punch in. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> I think it'd be so funny, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I really wish that they would add more people in. Uh, I think it'd be good for for everybody. So I think yeah, there's people sure. who, yeah, I, th- I think there's people who like they they hold resentment towards people. And and here's the thing, like let's say like a streamer got in, like a lot of people who play WoW or a lot of people who stream Classic, uh, who've been streaming the Classic beta, are people who've had accounts for a very very long time. Like my account mm-hmm. alone is like yeah. that's a I have a week one like vanilla WoW account. Like it was December 29th, two thousand six is whenever I created my account. Right. So like there's while it's not guaranteed, it's very likely that like a, a lot of these people like maybe they got random access. They didn't necessarily get like streamer access. Um, now did did they mm-hmm. go and like purposefully like okay like let's try and get let's try and make sure you know Asmongold and Soda Pop and some of these guys have access like. I, I I would be hard pressed to think that they wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, know how many of, of course they do. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's just one of those things. There's, that there's stupid thousands if they didn't. of people that have access, and there's right. like forty or fifty streamers, right? Right. 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 Like so. literally thousands of people. You know? Yeah, that's my thought. And it's just you know, who do you exclude? Don't exclude people, right? If you're a hardcore private server player that's going to hammer for bugs and be really good at feedback, you know great get in here right like you're a streamer with lots of users great get in here you're, you're a guy who's just had a 15-year account has been faithful to you know the game through bfa great get in here right mm-hmm. like um just don't exclude people you know like there's very few people you want to exclude but uh 
you don't want to give privilege, but you don't want to exclude others. And I don't, you know, yeah, I don't see the privilege right now in, in, you know, the streamer case. Yeah. You know, it'd be really cool is, uh, if the next, uh, the next stress test, you know, they, they invite like everybody or a bunch more people in and they just, they just don't turn off access. And like, once the, the stress test goes down, like all those people can just play the beta. Yeah, I weird. see. I, I was hoping surprise everyone with that, you know. But they're all they, going to have like Dune gear because they managed to kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's not going to be fair. Uh, yeah, I saw, dude. Somebody, uh, okay. I don't know how this happened. So I don't know if some rogue GM went on the stress test server and did this to somebody. Somebody put in the trade window a hand of rag on the stress test, and I was like. How like really? how do you have this? Like some GM just went and randomly like <laughs> right. uh, like yeah. dot create item hand of rag and That's just like right. gave it to some random like level four priest and he was just like hey guys look what I got. <laughs> like, like, That's, the old, That's the old trick to to beggars too. We used to use or right. I used to use is you leave it open in the trade window like you're about to okay it, you know, and the yeah. guy just sits yeah. there thinking yeah. he's gonna get a hundred gold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And of course, you just say okay, go, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I used to I used to do the same thing. I would say, "Oh wait, one second, be right back," and I would yeah, leave. One second, yeah. I would just go AFK for like ten minutes. <laughs> I'd come back and I'd still be there. Yeah, because <laughs> they're just so close. They're yeah. so close to getting the, the handbag. Yeah. yeah, it was really funny. Yeah, I just had it in the will not be traded box at the bottom. It was so funny, but uh, yeah. no, I, I think. Um, I think that would be great. Like I, I was under my, my initial thoughts on the stress tests that they were doing was I, I was under the impression that they were okay. Everybody play the stress test for two hours. And then mm-hmm. it was like anybody who got access to the stress test would get access to the main servers right. for like two, of like right, two right. days or whatever it was. That's, that's what I thought they were going to do. Um, but, but I guess they decided not to do that. Cause even that yeah. would be something that would they be cool. They discovered all those people were total riffraff. And they were like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of these guys stream so geez yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it's been uh I, I think i think the the experience is like one of my favorite streams i, I always talk about like and, and whether this was like whether it's more recently or with my old like irl streams and stuff like that i think that the important thing is uh i, I think memorable streams things that you're going to remember like for a long time are, are all like really important and, and really cool like the the last stress test stream that i had was so incredibly fun like i, I want to yeah. i, I want to honestly what i need to do is i need to go like clip that and post that on my youtube channel because that was just yeah, yeah. such a memorable stream it was so like what did we do we didn't we weren't even doing any game content we were just like it was a community yeah, just thing hanging just hanging out stores. exactly and like you know we're, yeah. we're running around we're, we're walking around the bridge in stormwind and we're like well we need to summon omar or someone just like having fun with it and then like yeah. you know coincidentally he just happens to show up on our layer and he's flying around it's funny right and it's like oh right. my gosh so yeah, it just that's became exactly a thing. the perfect, you know, marketing for classic, right? It's like no one's looking at the fact that you guys found this guy named Herod at the bottom of Scarlet Mary's monastery. And they're like, whoa, look at this guy. I've never seen him before. Right, right, like, right, exactly. No, it's just the fact that you guys were you created another set of you know stories and, and experiences, and that's what classic is gonna be about. That's exactly what we're all gonna be doing when we start up the game, you know, once it launches. So um, that's perfect. And streamers are the best at, you know, catapulting that idea to the you know general public. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think it'll be really, uh, I, I think it'll be really cool to see what happens. I, I think a lot of people, um, there's some people that just like blanket, like I hate X. Like they just, they just, they just want to put whatever in there. It's like, I hate streamers. Sure. I hate <laughs> boomkins. I hate whatever. Yeah, sometimes you know? I hate them too. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was like, Hey, I, uh, yeah, me too. Like I'll tell you, I'm me no too. But, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I think that's like, that's one of those things. I think once you get to like know people and, and see how people react, cause I, I think everybody's different, right? Everybody, uh, everybody kind of likes, likes to put labels on people and think like one person thinks this. So everybody thinks this. And, uh, I, I know for, you know, at least on the server that stay safe and I used to play on, like, you know, people, people knew us as people, right. People on the server knew us as people and, and for how, how we interacted with others and how we treated others. And I I would, uh, I I would, I would venture to, uh, to, to assume that I I don't see that changing for myself and and probably for stay safe anytime soon. Um, so yeah. And that's kind of how it goes. And that's just from our playing experience from playing together. Um, but Tips and I are going to be on the other side, so the way we treat you. Yeah, yeah, that'll uh, be different. <laughs> we're going to need GMs, is all yeah. I'm saying. 
Yeah, this yeah. entire podcast was actually an idea between me and Kevin to uh, make sure Blizzard doesn't ban us for griefing you guys. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, and I know, like, for one thing, like, uh, and kind of going back on, like, um, and and I haven't, I haven't like watched the video or whatever. Uh, but like, I know one one big one of the big memes right now is talking about like kind of, kind of going back on like the blacklist topic or whatever, uh, where it's like, oh, like you know, Soda Poppin said something about a blacklist or whatever. Like I, I haven't, I haven't watched the video of, of whatever he said on stream or whatever, but I, I know, like I had a conversation with him and we were, we were specifically talking about like, uh, streamers and other streamers, like basically other streamers going and like stream sniping other streamers and mm -hmm. like doing things to like, basically like, um, like how it's not right to go and try and stream snipe somebody. And you're basically like, you're, you're cucking the content for back of, for lack of a right. better term. Right. Uh, stuff like that. And I think like if somebody wants to go and they want to have like within their own personal community, like, hey, these are the people that I play with. This is what I do. Like, oh, I know that this guild is bad news. We don't group with them. Uh -huh. Right. Like, let's let's right. let's talk about Grizzly a little bit. Right. Stay safe. So stay safe was uh, he was he was one of the oh, bad okay. boys. on <laughs> And like this. So, 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 OK, so Grizzly was like a guild that, I, you know, and I have a lot of friends with in Grizzly. Right. And Grizzly was like. Grizzly, that's actually where the Rep Pryo meme came from. It was a playoff of Grizzly Pryo, where Grizzly Pryo was basically like, we own the server. Like, everything on the server, it's it's Grizzly versus everybody on the server. That's like what the idea was. Uh, yeah. If you're in a group with somebody who's not in Grizzly, F awesome. them. Need everything, yeah. you take everything, you ninja everything. Like, that's like what Grizzly, yeah. uh, the, the, it was originally. like. And right. what ended up happening was a lot of people really hated Grizzly because it was like, sure. oh, I won't group with those guys, you know? And right, I think right. I think people uh, people have the uh, players have the agency to to know that like okay well like I've learned that you know this type of player or somebody in this guild they act this way so I don't want to group with these people I, I think that's right. a very uh, normal way to feel right within your own community like I do not yeah. want to group with these guys that's fine I can't wait to be blacklisted I mean because that just separates from me from people that I don't want to group with you know? yeah yeah I mean <laughs> like gonna blacklist me great. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think, and this is a life thing too, is like if you, you know, play with people you want to play with, don't play with people that you don't want to play with. And if, if people don't want to play with you, then then you you don't need to go and try and like force yourself into a situation or anything like that. Um, you know, that, and that's, that's just kind of how it is, I guess. Yeah. Um, for me, like I, I, I don't think I've ever had like any, any real problems with it outside of like some memes and stuff, but that's just mm -hmm. how it goes, right? Like different people are yeah. different, so... It's all part of the experience, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that guild Grizzly, um, as a result of some of the memes that went on, you know, they had a huge problem. Every vanilla guild faces player attrition. People drop yeah. off. They decide they don't want to play anymore. They get lose interest. They get busy in real life. Whatever it is, people stop playing, and you have to recruit more people. That's just how every vanilla guild works. And mm -hmm. if you're operating a guild that way, where you're, you know, essentially, this is how it was, you're sort of fucking over everyone else in the server. Um, it's very hard to recruit people, <laughs> and so. <laughs> This guild ran into ran into recruitment problems and player attrition problems, so that is the ramification of behavior yeah. like that. There, there is that agency they, choose to do that, and they have to rebrand. You know, the kinder, gentler. Exactly. Grizzly. Yes. Actually, that actually is what exactly. happened with Grizzly. Yes. Literally, yes. <laughs> literally, yep. is literally, literally, yes. Literally, <laughs> yes. Yeah, new we're Grizzly new and old world. Grizzly. Where we got? We're gonna be fine. Oh, we're big again. All right, we start being a dick again. You know? uh, <laughs> like back and forth, all good. Yeah, no, and that, that's just how it is. Like. uh certain type of certain type of players act a certain type of way like us and, and mm -hmm. it's it's not a it's not a coincidence whenever you see certain things happen so yeah. no it's uh it's it's very cool it's very cool to see like how things play out and and you can you can kind yeah. of predict how things will continue to play out and I, I think once more people get into the game and once more people get into the experience and kind of get into the atmosphere instead of just like watching through a lens that's again i cannot wait for the game to come out because it's going to be yeah. Like, it's going to be for real this time. Yeah, and I think more people <laughs> will understand things that are happening, right? Because I yeah. think I think people watch streams and they're like, "Oh, like what, what's this? What's that?" Uh, right. And and another thing, dude. Like I so so I was tanking older man, right? I, I I was tanking older man last night, and I'm trying to farm for a pendulum of doom and the dazzling longsword drops, which is much more rare. You know, you could argue it's much more rare. Uh, well, I mean. Is it actually more? Anyway. I think so, probably. Well, 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 but think about it. That's like it can drop in more places, right? Because it's a world drop. So anyway, it, that's not the point, right? It's an epic, right? It's an epic world drop. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm like, frick, like you got to be joking me. Like it's a good item and it's especially good like as a tanking sword. But um, to say that like, you know, I, I get that instead of Pendulum of Doom, like I'm going for the Pendulum, but that happens to drop. 
Um, like just kind of like as a like it's not even a big thing. Like I roll need, and then the uh, uh, hunter in the group rolls need, right? And it's it's beca <laughs> because it's a hunter. It sure. it turns into a whole thing, and like the guy the guy's a good player. Like I was dueling him the other day, and like practicing stuff against mm -hmm. him. I thought he was a good player. Like I like, the guy has like no ill intent or anything. Like you just yeah. kind of rolled on it because it you know it's funny. Like we well, yeah, everybody's cool. Yeah. Like we're gonna figure stuff that out. Nice. But yeah. but people start like whisp like spamming him with mis whispers, like calling him an idiot and all this stuff. And it's right. like, dude, like it's not a big deal. Like we're just like we're gonna right. talk about it. And uh, I, I even was like willing to be like, you know, I, I if I had it, I would use it. Like if it kind of depends on what the group wants to do, whatever. And then they were like, yeah, like if you want to take it, take it. And I take it <laughs> and I put it on. I use it right. right. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just like one of those things where like I, I don't think it's fair. And this is something that is, uh, I do think it's on the streamers to do this. Like mm -hmm. we need to go and we need to like establish an environment of saying like, yo, like you can't control everybody. I, I know, right. but at least you need to do your due diligence and be like, look guys, like it, it's almost like GTA RP. GTA RP had a big problem with metagaming. If you were metagaming and telling people like, oh, so-and-so is over by the bank, you know, like, don't like, don't do that right. in chat. Like we don't want that. I don't want to know where soda popping is. I don't want to know where uh Ven Rookie is. I don't know where Rosidu is. Like don't do that. Like just right. let the game play out naturally. <laughs> like it, it just just let people play the game, right? Um, You're a monkey ass fan. Damn. Yeah, Damn. it's like it's like you guys you guys, go gank him. Go gank him. And I'm like, no, like if I come across him and something happens, something happens. I kind of have like my own way that I handle things. Like typically like if I'm it, it, typically like if I see somebody that I know, uh, typically <laughs> if I see somebody that I know, I I, I don't like I, I don't fight them in like an unfair situation or something like that. Like uh, I just I think it's kind of lame and it's like you don't really prove anything by doing it um, like if you're friends and stuff it's like kind of funny maybe but like uh, I don't right. I don't do anything to put anybody in a bad situation um, so I, I will say yeah, also just about I don't think it's fair that's my, kind of my point it's like yeah I, I, my point I guess is just in a nutshell I don't think it's fair that like for for people to like oh we got to go protect our streamer friends or, or like who are, who are, right, are, are right. The, the streamer that we choose to watch like sure, like sure. that's that's very appreciated. Like whenever people are willing to stand up for you, very very appreciated. But there's a time and a place for that, and I don't think harassing other people yeah, is yeah. is the place is the way to do it. That's what what right. I mean to say about that. Yeah, yeah. It's really unfortunate. Like you, we even though obviously no streamer wants their chat metagaming or telling them who's where or stream sniping for them, it's not going to stop. Like people right. will never stop backseat gaming. I mean, we've we have all played and streamed Dark Souls games. We all had in our title, and some of us had on-stream overlays saying, "No advice." First yeah. time play, no advice. Yep. The entire chat, the entire stream, people give advice. There's like you, you cannot get them to yeah. stop. Miss legendary bro. Miss yeah. legendary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I didn't have that problem. All five yeah, of my exactly. Oh, soda poppins here actually. You know. Yeah, that's so. that's exactly how I feel. Soda poppins here. He's, he's in chat. I, I didn't even notice. Um, nice. Yeah. So yeah, if GTRP or if GTRP can do it, we can do it. Yeah, exactly. Like. So I don't. I haven't watched GTRP. Have they actually stopped it entirely? So Does it just not happen? Because I don't know. It, it's it is on it is on the streamers. It is a it is a streamer sanctioned thing where it's like, look, make it make it in your title or something like no meta gaming. I, I think you have to put it in the title because it was like it was a hype thing and you had a lot of new viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's something that needs to be established in classic where it's like no meta gaming. Like like. We, we need to do what we can like, okay, we're streaming and all this stuff, but like, let, let's preserve the, the, uh, random occurrences and just kind of like the, preserve the spirit of the game as much as we can. Right. I don't, I don't, I'm not freaking here sitting at mission control and I have like uh, thousands of people like, okay, should pinpoint the location of soda pop in and Asmund gold. And <laughs> I don't like, I don't want that. Like I want to play the game and I want to have fun. Like I want to, I want to enjoy the game the way that I want to enjoy the game. And if, if something happens and something happens, like uh, that's, that's right. the way that I think should happen. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's tough to control things, man. I think it's just one of those situations where, yeah, obviously try to, I mean, and I think with the beta specifically, like we've kind of gotten a misrepresented form of stream sniping right now in the beta, just because there's so few people and there's even less people at level 40, it's really difficult to do what you want to do. Like if you want a world PVP right now, it's really hard to find organic world PVP. It's like damn near impossible, especially yeah. at nighttime. I've, I've been streaming later at nights. Like I'll be like, okay, let's go to Duskwood. Nobody's in Duskwood. Let's go to STV. Nobody's Whoa. in STV. Let's go. Well, there's this Alliance streamer that's playing right now, and I've never actually done it. I've never actually gone and sniped a streamer doing that, but I've definitely felt the, um, you know, if somebody comes in chat and says, oh, this guy's here, you know, you feel the temptation. It's not because mm -hmm. I want to go stream snipe that person. It's 
there is no other world PvP going on except here. Well, I think you just got to know where to be. Like, uh, like go to Duskwood. Like, there's what level like level t like mid twenties and like maybe maybe low thirties. Like on their way to the top of Stranglethorn Vale. Like, you, you got to go find the right people, right? Like, if if the level cap is forty, what are people going to be doing? And like Badlands is a good place for that, right? Because people are going to want to go there and like um, it's a good place to farm like flame sacks. Good place to farm like uh, different like there's a few different quests there, right? Like Nifty Stopwatch quest is there. There's some stuff there that you can start to get that are a gear that's a little bit higher level than you from some quests. So Badlands is kind of like a natural place to go in between. You've, you've got Kargath, you've got Lock Madon. I, I think it's, I think it's very accessible for both factions. And I've seen a lot of people running around Badlands, especially people wanting to do old demand for, for Pendulum of Doom. So I, I think like, I think you can find the right places, right? It's just that you got to know where to go and you've got to kind of like think, think about how the meta is different, right? Yeah. That's what I, that's what I would say. With groups that large, you have to lay claim to a zone. You got to kill everyone in the zone, let the message get out that there's a giant horde and blasted lands or wherever, and basically just taunt the other side into coming and trying to kick you out of it. Yeah, all I'm and saying they'll, is to they'll want to find you too. I mean, everyone wants the next big fight. That's why we're here. So, exactly. Well, I mean, like the other night, like literally two nights ago, we went everywhere. When we STV, Duskwood, Badlands, everywhere, and just couldn't find anyone. Right. And uh, I mean, I think an AB ended up popping. So like we, we went there. But what, what I'm trying to say is I think what's happening right now, a lot of the stream sniping stuff hopefully is kind of beta specific. Yeah. Um, at least like if there's more people online, then a lot of this stuff just doesn't need to happen. Right. But um, but regardless, I mean, stream sniping is, is just not cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, earlier, I'm, but... I'm trying to think from a streamer perspective, what do we well, like, just streamer, start you're... timing people out that are doing it? Like, th I, I guess that's all we can do. Well, well, if no, no, you're no. metagaming in chat, you're getting timed out. Okay, well, here's the thing. It's like specifically stream sniping, right? It, it's, it's like stream, streamers sniping other streamers is like the, what we're talking about, right? Streamers sniping other streamers. I think it's only natural that you get stream. Like that is part of the game, right? Naturally, you are going to get stream sniped sometimes. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. and it's going to be both good and it's going to be, it's going to be both good and bad. Like, that's just, that is the nature of streaming. That is the way that it happens. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what you signed up for, you know? And, uh, I honestly, I have not had that much of a problem with it. And, and some days you'll have more problems than others. Uh, but I, I would say in the beta so far, I've not had much of a problem with it. Did I have a problem with it whenever I was streaming on YouTube? Yeah. Some days I did, but like, it's, it's that's the game. And, you know, I got to find ways to kind of be adaptable and figure out how to get out of it. Uh, sometimes people would come to, to my aid, you know, and it's like, what people will realize is that it's usually not a good look because if you go and it's like two or three guys or like, let's say you have a five man group camping one guy, it just kind of makes you look bad. And then people will see that and they're like, okay, this guy's kind of pathetic, right? Like the, the guys who are camping you. Um, however, I think if you're stream sniping, and actually like helping to provide content in a, in a weird way. I don't mind it. I actually think it's funny. Like for example, like there, there's three rogues, there's three troll rogues, the Ugas. dude, yeah. they, I, I, the first time I saw them, I laughed so hard. It was so funny. Cause like, they're literally like, like surrounding you, like RP walking, like walking around you. And it's dude, it was so funny. They're so well coordinated. <laughs> they saw me in STV. What do they do? They all triple, triple troll rogue, triple garrote rupture vanish it's like do 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 and then i'm sitting here and i'm just bleeding out i have no bubble and i just die and it was the funny i couldn't do anything because because i just rezzed uh i just rezzed i didn't have full mana i healed myself as much as i could but i'm just sitting there and just like blood is just gushing out of me and i just yeah and they didn't they didn't sit there and camp me forever right they didn't do anything to like uh kind of like i said earlier like cuck the content if anything they provided it like i i was so entertained by it because i thought it was genuinely super creative and it was funny so yeah and they 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 put a little campfire next to me and they sat down there yeah, and yeah. they like yeah it was just funny like <laughs> that's respectable you know and i and i think that's, that's yeah. not necessarily a bad thing but whenever it comes to streamers There's... sniping other streamers that's that's kind of a different thing right that's that's more so what we're talking about yeah i think it's like on the respectable word, right? That I'm going to highlight mm -hmm. that. Like, there's two types. So I've had a guy that the other day I was leveling and he followed me around for three or four hours and he followed me from zone to zone. He was trying to get me at the graveyard and he just would not leave me alone. There's that. And like, that's more of a problem. That's when like the respect is lost. The Uga guys, they'll kill you once. It's like one, everybody gets one per day. They get Uga'd once. And then, <laughs> and then they're funny about it. They move on. They go do something else. Right. Um, now, in either situation, I don't think 
anyone should be punished or banned. Like that's just what it is. At the end of the day, as a streamer, you're choosing to broadcast your location. Is it annoying? Is it is is in some cases it not very respectable? True. But should anyone get in trouble? Like have Blizzard step in? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right. And here's the thing. Like I'll say good. about you know all of these good experiences, all these bad experiences, right? Like we've all had them. We've all had great experiences. We've all had really terrible experiences. Um, mm -hmm. But when you add them all up at the end of the day, we're coming back to a 15 year old game because in total, we want to do it again. We want to run it back because in total, we had way more positive and amazing experiences than we did negative experiences. If that were shifted, we wouldn't be coming back. We'd just be like, man, you guys remember, wow, how hard that game was to play? Because you literally couldn't take five steps without being ooped by somebody, right? Like, <laughs> It's just like we, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be excited about the next wave of this game because we're excited because, man, at, at the end of the day, we had so many more positive experiences and we appreciated them because the possibility is that we could have negative experiences, which we also had. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Stream Snipers, you're actually doing us a favor. You're making us appreciate the good times even more. <laughs> That's right. Bring it on. So keep yeah. doing it, please. Well, but you no, have I... to have a staff of Jordan if you're going to attack. <laughs> Did I okay? I so badly, I so badly want somebody to get a staff of Jordan and just hand it to you. I think it would be yeah. so funny. Not you're like, I bet you're like, yeah, of course, I'd love it too. <laughs> but I think it'd be I so good. Be a... Uh, it'd be so good if you had a staff of Jordan. Show me that's a hunter weapon. Come on and raptor strike me with that thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what, dude? I, I bet that thing's actually awesome for shaman. I can enhance shaman. Because what is it? It's 3.7 speed, isn't it? Don't get me Let's check right now. I was actually going to check the second. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a nice, nice one for... It is 3.7. 180 top end damage. Like, that's a big boy for Wind Fury. Yeah. And then you got the bonus damage for whenever you want to shock people. Like, that'd be... Pretty yeah, nice. I can also push frost shock. Yeah, dude, yeah. that's better than whirlwind axe, dude. <laughs> that's yeah, really good. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a big boy. Oh, it'll be mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use that. That's best in slot forever. What are you doing, axe gear? All right. <laughs> yeah. I got I got my I got my staff. Got my <laughs> my own personal staff. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, I think it's uh, I I think it's cool, right? Like like the the concept of like. Uh, and I do think it's different, like stream streamers sniping other streamers versus like a uh, viewer or whatever uh, stream sniping. Like I, I don't really have, uh, I'm not like particularly surprised by anything. I kind of have the, my own way that I play the game, and uh, people people everybody plays the game different. That's kind of how I feel yeah. about it. Uh, I, I don't know if Tips had to turn off his camera or something for a second. Maybe they restart. There he is. Um, so yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about like and and here's the thing. So so we've had Kevin on before, guys. If you want to see like any previous episodes of Classic Cast, you can uh, exclamation point YouTube. You can check out my YouTube channel. Uh, every Classic Cast is on there. Uh, I, I I do want to whenever you know we can finally take some time off the beta. I, I do apologize. It's been pretty pretty. Uh, uh, it's been a while since we did the last episode of Classic Cast. It's just because with beta stuff going on and everybody has different schedules. Tips was moving. I I moved as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff has been going on. So we've, we've had a hard time. I'm going to, I'm going to dream hack next week, uh, dream hack in Sweden. So we're, we're trying to get some stuff figured out there. Um, yeah. So like that, that whole thing has been going on, but we did have Kevin on in the past and we talked a lot about class design stuff. And, uh, I, I would like to talk about some stuff then because we have a lot of people who are watching this who, who probably didn't see that episode or, uh, it, it is a very different audience. Um, we can, we can talk a little bit about some of that stuff, but, uh, if you guys want to see that last episode that we had with Kevin that is again on my YouTube channel. So, um, <clears throat> so Kevin, um, when it comes to, uh, a lot of the different, like you, you designed everything, like you were in charge of designing literally every single class. Um, right. the big things, and, and we talked a little bit about this at the very beginning of the podcast. Uh, we talked about like balance and stuff like that. Uh, did you guys have, and this is something I, I think we, I, I believe we even talked about this. It, we, I know we have talked about this at some point. I believe it was on the podcast. It might've been off the podcast, but we were talking about like hybrid tax, right? It seems like there's a lot yeah. of people that are new to classic and they say, well, what is so bad about balancing everything? Like what is so wrong with balancing uh, boomkins or whatever? Like, could, could you explain like why you guys approached, uh, why, why you approached hybrids the way that you did uh, in back whenever you were designing uh, vanilla WoW? Uh, okay, so the the core problem with designing a hybrid is if he's if 
if like the ultimate hybrid is the druid when i think about hybrids mm -hmm. that's really the only class i think of in terms of fitting the hybrid uh, because he can do it all at the same time mm -hmm. right whereas most classes have to pick a spec and then they go down one roll particularly mm -hmm. hard what about paladins are you saying paladins can't tank uh <laughs> paladins can tank red paladins cannot. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so um the druid is the shape-shifting guy he's the you know the swiss army knife he can do all the roles at all times right it was kind of the concept um behind him uh but he couldn't be the best at it in all of those things because then he's the only class that anyone would want to play right mm -hmm. if you can do all things at all times and you're equally balanced right uh so the idea was to make a, a hybrid that you know could do everything at once would be shape-shifting constantly these are the very early concepts but would not be as good in any particular one thing uh, but that doesn't actually work in the high-end scene right that just means you're excluded eventually because everything is min max everything is uh, specialized to be a specific role. So um, that doesn't actually work in practice. So we had to go more of the traditional, you pick a spec, you go down one role, and you can do those other things a little better than other people, but you still have a specific role and your job is to do that one thing. So, um, but that, that was sort of the original concept behind the Druid. Why is, um, why is everything not balanced? Everything being balanced is actually not very fun. It's it's actually very easy to balance a game. Um, you have nine classes. They do three damage, and they have three health. There. Everything's balanced. <laughs> um, they have one button, <laughs> right? Push the button. Oh, it's a draw. Everybody ties again, right? Yeah. Like, um, that's it. You know, the, balanced, right? Not fun, obviously. And right. I think uh, people's desire for balance is, is one of the reasons that BFA is in the state it's in with the classes, because everyone kind of has all the mechanics, you know, that they've been searching for perfect balance so that, you know, uh, no one's complaining, but it's like, but no one's having any fun either, right? So mm -hmm. the, the imbalances are actually a part of um, what makes a game fun, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And what you do as a designer is just kind of rotate through you know, these are the bad specs, let's boost them. Oh, now there's new bad specs. Okay, let's boost them. Oh, there's new bad specs, let's let's boost them. Right. You know, you just kind of go around and around and around. And so you don't really ever want to achieve perfect balance. You want to achieve um, fun at all times, and you want to achieve um, people feeling like they have their moments, right? So everyone gets their day to shine, right? And that's mm -hmm. also why you have different, you know, raid content or different, dungeon content, um, and even specifically like outdoor content. Some some classes are very good inside of caves. Some classes are less so, right? Mm -hmm. um, so even in the soloing kind of leveling experience, there's places where people shine and there's places where they don't. So that's the idea is, um, you know, don't, uh, don't try to balance everything perfectly. Just make sure it's fun and that everyone feels their moment to shine. Mm-hmm sure yeah we like it is one of those things like um like i mentioned before it almost seems like everybody has like that that one thing right so it's like oh like i i, I think it's the most crazy thing in the world people complain when we're a paladin bubbles it's like well what the hell else do we have right. like <laughs> come on dude yeah. <laughs> like oh he had the bubble and i'm like yeah of course like you had to you had yeah, to sinister that's, strike <laughs> you know, like, that's one of my that's one of my tricks yeah uh, you can vanish i can bubble you know mm -hmm. No, now, the real the real meme is paladins that only duel once an hour. All oh, right, that's bro. me. That's I, we, me. We had our duel. I blew my land hands. All, I, I got to AFK for now. That's, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Exactly. <laughs> that's me. That's right. Yeah, yeah. NeverQuest, it was a 24-hour cooldown, so it was even worse than NeverQuest. Oh, Quest. really? You take a day off, you know, one duel for 24 hours. Wow. That's crazy. That is cool. Yeah. Downtime. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. I got to say, sorry, go ahead. What are your thoughts, Kevin, on those like long one hour, 30 minute cooldowns? What do you think about those like now in retrospect? Um, so they were they were way like I bring up EQ specifically because mm -hmm. they were way better than the competition, right? In terms of like making players wait to use their buttons. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the lay on hands is a classic. It's from Dungeons and Dragons. It's super powerful, but it can't be something we allow people to use all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So um, and that was always the you know, 
difficult thing with long cooldown abilities. You want them to feel really powerful, but mm -hmm. you don't want people to wait. You know, then there's a sweet spot where it's like, because when, you know, you guys were doing the, the Herod run in Scarlet Monastery, mm -hmm. um, during one of the pulls, S fan uses lay on hands. And I was like, uh oh, here comes a moment where they might sit outside the door of Herod. I, 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 I suggested it. I suggested it. Yeah, yeah, I was like, maybe we should wait. Like, as a game designer, I'm like, oh, dear God, what have I done? You know, yeah. like, <laughs> have I really created a situation where <laughs> I'm going to have these guys for maximum, you know, min-max potential sit on their ass for 55 minutes or whatever? Yeah. So there's a sweet spot where it's like, okay, well, we're not willing to wait 55 minutes. We'll wait 10. You know, we'll wait 15 maybe. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, so... You know, we always had to gauge when is where is that time where people are willing to wait because you can I, you can really underestimate that. So, I think yeah. you're totally right, and I mean, you know, in retail WoW with raiding, all your cooldowns are reset every attempt on the boss. Yeah. Right, you have everything right. up every boss attempt, and I think that that decreases the importance of the cooldowns. Like, it doesn't feel yeah. like oh man, I just popped a big cooldown. Like, if we don't mm -hmm. get it this attempt, we're screwed for the next right. half hour. Right. Um, so I think that feeling is important. Maybe that it's hard to say what that sweet spot is 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I think one hour is probably too long, but every, every mm -hmm. reset of the poll, I think that's, that's too frequent, I think. Yeah. Well, and it, it creates a decision-making process, you know, that's, that's more right, deep, right. you know, it's like, okay, well, well, even if I use it here, we're still going to wipe. So I'm not going to use it. I'll save it for the next. Exactly. Right. Right. Feel like yeah. This could actually push us over, you know, but, well, um, so yeah, it's just the, the, the choice is more meaningful. I talk about this all the time, uh, specifically with like lay on hands, right? It's a one hour cooldown. I, I don't have that big of a problem on it. Like if it was 30 minutes, would that be nice? Sure. If it was 10 minutes, would, I mean, would that be nice? Great. Right. But like the, the reality of it is almost any situation, it, it's very rare that I come across a situation where I'm like, dude, I need to use lay on hands here and it's mm -hmm. not up. Like that's just how it is right. for me. Cause like, yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of other players, I, I know there's other pe players who feel this way too. Like, of course you have like Twitch chat or people like, Oh, but he used lay on hands. But it's like, yeah, I did. Then I'm probably not mm -hmm. going to need to use it for another hour. Like I might, All right. I might, but it's right. not likely that I'm, I'm coming into situations where I need to use lay on hands to get out of a problem. Yeah. Or like there's times where like I die and it's like, Oh, but he had lay on hands up. And I'm like, yeah, I did. Yeah. But I, I chose not to use it because I thought, you yeah, know yeah. what? I might lay on hands and I might still lose. You know, I might still die. Yeah, here, so. yeah. I, I, I had someone never end up using it, you know, and it's like it may as well not even be on your bar because yeah. you're so worried about the time after now. <laughs> <It's gonna be laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, I, I was doing a duel. Yeah. I was doing a duel earlier today and I had to Hellstone. And some guy's like, oh, it doesn't count you at a Hellstone. I can't believe you had to Hellstone that. And it's like, yeah. dude. Well, it's one of your class abilities. Like, like it sucks. It's one of my class abilities. And I, I put two talent points in it to improve the Hellstone. It's like, come right, on. Right. Like, yeah. it's one of like the primary things that a warlock does is make yeah, Hellstones. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but there's another Hellstone right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If fear, fear and just create another Hellstone. Like, there you go. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The the thing that gets me is like the the fear like fear like Voidwalker sack spam like that is oh that is so AIDS but that's just how it goes guys by the way well uh, we do we do have Kevin here right we have, we have Kevin here and we do want to go to Q and A here in a little bit uh, if you guys have questions for us uh, feel free to tweet at us I, I usually look at Twitter first um, I usually look at Twitter first so if you guys want to tweet at us with hashtag Classicast. Uh, at S Fan TV, at Tips Out Baby, at Stay Safe Warlock, you can you can tweet at us, and I'll, and I'll go ahead and look at Twitter in a little bit. Uh, we'll also probably take a few questions from chat as well. So um, we'll do that. If you guys have any questions for Kevin, if you have any questions for us, uh, we 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 do have Kevin here. So if if you guys do have questions about like game design, classic, whatever, uh, like uh, we we'd love to take those. But also, you should definitely go follow Kevin Jordan uh, and go ask him those questions yourself in case we can't get to them uh, right now. So. Uh, yeah, let's keep going from there and then I'll, I'll check that in a second. Um, <clears throat> all that sweet hex love in the chat. Thank you so much, guys. That was yeah, a fun game to work on. There you go. Um, but yeah, like kind of, th I kind of want to clarify a little bit whenever I talk about like hour long cooldowns and stuff. Like it's, it's not that like I'm sitting in the city all day, right? But it's just the amount of time it takes you to do things in classic. Like you might be traveling, you might be in the city for a little bit. You might come across like like the likelihood of coming across like a player who like you might think is like good enough or a class that's like oh man like this is really tough for me like a shaman right shamans are like really hard for me 
uh, at max level just because of how they're designed, right? But, you know, they've got, they're more offensive. They have purges and they have stuff to get rid of buffs. They have the grounding totem. So I just have to be like more on my toes whenever I'm finding a shaman. Yeah. That's just the way it is, they're right? Playing, that, they're playing checkers. You're playing chess. Totally different game. Right, exactly. So uh, that's just, that's just kind of how it goes. But, um, but yeah. Is I, it I, true that Red Paladins are playing chess? Yeah. For real? Well, oh, here's the thing. Okay. Okay, and Kevin Kevin will, will probably agree with me on this. Whenever you don't have as many buttons to press, right, there's there's not as many things laid out in front of you. You have to call on other things in order to make up for the parts of your class that are maybe – that are seemingly lacking, right? So you have like to – Like auto-attacks. Well, like, well so that's like, the thing. It's uh, like it seems like you're like just auto-attacking. Yeah, like hard counter. Well, they warlocks. do hard counter warlocks. Yes, they do do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, those are the things you have to call upon sometimes when you're not pushing buttons. Just you know, yeah. auto attacking warlocks down. Right. Like it's like timing your autos and like, okay, for example, it's like, okay, if I want to auto, auto at the right time to bubble right mm -hmm. after I auto right. so that That's I get right. another auto in before the, the attack speed. You got time you're saying boom every time you get the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boom. Yeah. You got to practice. Yeah. Boom. There's yeah, a, yeah, exactly. There's so a no, cadence to it. There's a whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So that's that's the thing. That's <laughs> why playing playing Rep Paladin is like being a chess grandmaster. Absolutely. But yeah, to talk about that just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. He actually didn't pressure the Paladin's global because he's a support character that answers a lot of questions, right? Yep. He answers a lot of problems. And so his global has to be kind of free to be re reactive to those problems, right? So um, more than many, he's a support class, right? Whereas other healers might have been seen as, you know, spamming their heals constantly because that's their core role. The Paladin was intent was to be up there mailing a little bit and having a lot of free globals to answer problems. Obviously, mm -hmm. it didn't work out that way because flash of light spam was a thing. And a lot of red Paladins were like, I really wish I had more buttons to press when I was fighting. But that was the, that was the design purpose behind him not having constant but like the rogue is free to just spam buttons all the time because his he doesn't have to support anyone he doesn't have to think about anyone but himself and the dps he's throwing down so we can fill his global cooldown with you know constant pressure but the paladin a little more relaxed he's playing chess you know he's thinking mm -hmm. long term he's got the big the whole board yeah exactly head. you have a lot of open globals and you got to spend those for the right things yeah, yeah exactly exactly so that's just how it goes. Uh, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and not get for the, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Bunch yeah. Of Surely only for <laughs> supreme intellectuals. Yes. Yes. <laughs> indubitably. <laughs> indubitably. Yes. Yes. <laughs> quite. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and get to the Q and A. Uh, there is uh, there, there's some questions here, uh, kind of more specific to, to classic. Uh, just to clarify, Kevin Kevin is not a part of the the like new wow classic release but but he made Correct. the original or he, he was involved in class or actually he was the lead on class design uh for like the original game right that it's based off of right. so there's some questions that are like specific to that we're not really gonna get to those but um but yeah we'll get to some other stuff um we've talked about this before uh plenty of times this is always comes up but let's go ahead and have kevin answer this one this is from braxer uh, what do what do you think will come at the end of Classic? Like, how do you how do you foresee Classic playing out? Like, will they go to Burning Crusade and Wrath and uh, like wh wh where do you see it going? Uh, okay, so I, I have three dream scenarios, um, and they're all they're all great, and I'm hoping I'm I'm hoping as many of these come true as possible. One is the philosophy of Classic influences current mm -hmm. the current WoW team mm -hmm. to start moving retail towards back towards you know the philosophies in the game that we all fell in love with 15 mm -hmm. years ago right uh that's one dream scenario and slowly mm -hmm. but surely current wow starts to get better and better and better right uh two is the sort of the classic plus you know scenario where the game gets expanded either no new levels or content you know extra tiers of raids and things like that that's brand new to the wow universe in classic mm -hmm utilizing all the philosophies of, you know, classic, et cetera, um, mm -hmm. or some form of TBC, you know, again, that we can somehow magically all agree on that we want. <laughs> um, but they expand the game in some way. 
Uh, the right. third dream scenario is that Classic influences the rest of the industry to make us a brand new MMO that's super high quality, has tons and tons of uh, great stuff to do, and we can all play a brand new game in a new universe that's you know new to everyone, but has the philosophy of old school Classic, right? Mm -hmm. So it's potent it's possible all three of those things occur, but those are my dream so, scenarios, and I think all so, of them are actually reasonably likely. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't care so much about TBC then? Uh, well, here's the thing: like, I just don't know how they can do TBC in a way that satisfies any more than say 15, 20 percent of the of the populace, right? Because we're so split on what we want from TBC. Some will say no changes. Some will say, how can you know? use the old school philosophy so tbc with like a tbc but with classic philosophies others will say don't touch it ever i just want to play classic mm -hmm. vanilla classic forever um you know and then there's you know everyone sort of wants their own version of tbc or what to do with classic plus right, so right. well at, this, at how the do same they point actually move forward without at the same point um everyone's wanted different versions of vanilla as well. There have been people that right. haven't wanted achievements added to vanilla to classic. There have been people that have right. wanted, I've heard people that want pet battles in classic and it's oh, like, okay, sure. yeah. you know, let, let's just play the game as it was. And so, you know, I, th mm -hmm. I think vanilla is better than TBC uh, by a pretty big margin. I don't like right. flying. There's a lot of things that I, I think they messed up on, but there are a lot of people that, that they love, that they love TBC and they're just sort of, you know, maybe they're not yeah. as interested in classic. They're just sort of waiting for TBC. So, right. I don't know. And, and as an so, extension of that, I'll, I'll say this, like, I think WAD or the Draenor is terrible. I, I hated it. Right, I think it's right. it's the antithesis of what I love about WoW, right? right? But in eight, nine years, if people are pushing for classic WAD, if there's a demographic of people that want to play classic right. WAD, I will I will help them push for that because I don't want to be okay. the guy that says, hey, I got mine. Uh, hey, right, if, right. if you like WAD, go screw yourself, right? So what happens so, to vanilla? Because there's going to be a lot of people that if we do push TBC, even a TBC no changes out the door, which is probably the best version they could, the most crowd pleasing version. Um, what what then with vanilla? Do we allow vanilla to continue to exist and half the population moves on? Oh and yeah, stays behind, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, so each each subsequent version after vanilla will draw an audience. Um, Maybe they're not playing right right now. Maybe they're unsubbed. Like it, it right. will draw it will draw people back. So it'll bring new people. And I think, of course, there will be a split and a fracture. As people like, yeah, there yeah. are people that want to play classic now that will move on to TBC and never play classic again if they had TBC or Wrath right. or whatever. Right. Um, the thing with a lot of these early versions of WoW, uh, vanilla TBC and Wrath specifically, the server communities are so insular that all mm -hmm. you really need are a couple popular servers. To have a healthy ecosystem you know with tbc right. you need to have sure. a couple servers for arena queues for wrath similar thing for vanilla mm -hmm. i mean worst case you really only need one popular server that like if, if all it was if all if there was only enough interest in classic well for one healthy server that would be perfectly fine as far as right. like gameplay goes right, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so in, uh, in 10 years where we're uh let's say three expansions further along in retail are we yeah. going to be at the place where we want classic bfa i mean it isn't that huh. why we're at Classic? Is because uh, listen, listen, we don't so want to walk there, down there, the there, I, I imagine there will be a demographic <laughs> that wants that 12 years from now or whatever. Somebody... I, I know a lot of people, I, I don't like Mop. I, I didn't like Mop, but I know right. that a lot of people loved Mop. I think I think there would right. be people that want to play replay Mop again or Kata. Personally, would I play it? Hell no. But if that movement yeah, yeah. starts up, I would be All like, right. yeah, hey, you should make it, Blizzard. Go ahead and make I, it. There's I people think... want it. Yeah. I think it would be very, very uh, hypocritical if people seven years from now wanted uh, wanted Cata or something, classic Cataclysm. I think it would be very hypocritical for like someone like me who has wanted classic for a long time, people like us, to, to speak against it, right? Now, I sure. just – people yeah. can play it if they want. I probably right. will not play it. I, I, I don't really like Cataclysm. I did not like Cataclysm very much, right? Um but I think it would be very hypocritical to to be speaking out against sure. an older version of the game that other people would like to play and I don't. Sure. So, but I think you know, in the spirit of classic, um, um, I think the idea is we want to create a thing that we can play that we loved back in the day, mm -hmm. and then expand upon that, and not make remake the same mistakes moving forward. I think for a lot of us. 
that would be the dream, right? Mm -hmm. um, not for everyone, of course. Some people are going to want, like you say, they're going to want all the expansions as it is, no changes right down the line. Um, but I think a lot of people want, you know, the next steps to be essentially, you know, new content because it's, it's the same content, but with new philosophy that has changes the context of what we do. So, yeah, absolutely. I think uh... it's Blizzard in a really difficult, you know, place because they're going to have a lot of different people saying a lot of different things about how to move forward. Right? Yeah, like the, the problem is yeah. a lot of things that we and we're all in the same mindset. <clears throat> we're classic boys, vanilla guys, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, wouldn't consider the things to be like we we consider for example flying or achievements etc whatever whatever mm -hmm. things that we don't like can consider be mistakes a lot of people that might be their favorite part of wow and yeah, they absolutely. might be they might be eagerly awaiting classic wrath because they mm -hmm. want to redo the original achievement and stuff like that so right. i don't know like I, I i don't want my desires or my gameplay interests to motivate whether or not other people get right. their favorite version of the game because for a long time for six seven years when i was playing yeah. private servers and vanilla wow was you couldn't very get classic. Yeah. i couldn't get it and people were people were shouting it down there was the wall of no right. i was told that my interest was illegitimate a waste of time oh, totally. no one cared yeah. about it so i i don't want to be that same guy that's shouting out other right. people's interests right right it, 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 just let them have it like it doesn't impact and that's why uh, you know classic plus any kind of idea we discuss is difficult because you know i think any consensus that can be achieved it's it's easiest to to achieve for classic vanilla but every expansion after that is a much bigger ask because a lot of people are going to be like absolutely not mm -hmm. a lot more people than you know because look look at just the the force of the no changes crowd right it's like we could do all these things with classic wow we could have a shiny new interface we could put in dungeon finder we could let you fly around you know and it's like <laughs> Well, I love flying around. I love Dungeon Finder, you know, like for all the people that are like, those are, those are great, you know, so put them in, you know, and it's like, yeah, but, but there's just been an overpowering voice of no changes because, you know, that, that's kind of the big consensus, um, generally speaking, but the, that consensus is going to start to fall apart right. once you start talking about TBC and it's going to get worse and worse and worse as you progress. So again, think, Blizzard can do a lot of these things, but will they, you know, like, will they feel it's worth it? You know, cause it's like, they're going to have to pick a group that they want to appease. And it's going to be, you know, at best in my mind, like a 20% of the population kind of group. Yeah. I mean, no matter what, it's going to be interesting, you know, once people, once, once it's phase six of classic, wow, you know, two years from now, people are clearing knacks, et cetera people are, are done right with vanilla wow yeah it'll be interesting yeah. to see what do people want do they want to play right. it again do they want new content for vanilla in this similar development mindset as you mentioned yeah. do they want do they want tpc they i want would a lot of guess things yeah i would guess probably tpc i think blizzard will probably go with TBC. i, I think well that's like it's the, already there it's such an easy it's such an it's easy task for them i think yeah it's a layup mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, think I think the second you you ask people what you know the, the design philosophies of classic are that's like your first that's the first point of contention that will arise and i think that's the problem with classic plus content what are the design philosophies of vanilla i think a lot of us are starting to understand yeah. them more now than we did you know a few years ago and a few right. years before that but at the end of the day you know what is the vanilla experience to each and every individual that varies whereas tbc and wrath are already there and i'm actually not sure if you saw this kevin but um a couple of weeks ago, both Jalen and Brack, Jalen Brack did an interview with Forbes magazine a couple of weeks ago where he kind of indirectly said they're, they're already working on it to a certain extent, um, or at least the conversations are beginning with that. And John Hyde, the executive producer of World of Warcraft, I did an interview with him about a month ago, and he said they're very open to the idea of working on TBC and yeah. Wrath. So I actually, you know, you mentioned your three scenarios that you think uh, that you would like to see. I would say two of those are probably already in development. And the first one is, you know, TBC and Wrath or some continuation of Classic. Mm -hmm. And I think the second one is that, you know, new MMOs being developed. I actually had a yeah. conversation with a pretty a pretty high-ranking person at a pretty prominent developer. And um, I don't want to say his name because I'm not sure if he's okay with it, but there's discussions at his studio about creating right. an MMO. And these yeah. discussions were not taking place, you know, three, four months ago. So, right. I mean, it's just, it's one developer. It's a one-off thing. Maybe the conversation goes nowhere. But the fact that people are talking about this genre again, 
is just incredible. Yeah. And I think it, it speaks to hopefully what's to come. Uh, and, uh, and the release and the success of, of Classic is going to push that forward even further. Mm -hmm. I, I have a couple things to say. Uh, one, I, I do agree. I think I think classic TBC is going to be like a layup. I think that's something that is very natural that the people would enjoy, uh, that a lot of people do want to see classic TBC. I think that'd be great. Uh, I do think that like a classic plus could be something that is really, really cool. Could even be amazing. Uh, but I don't think it should happen over Burning Crusade. Uh, I think that Burning Crusade should, should be the first thing on the table and then maybe uh, after like a, a cycle of classic, whatever, it's like, okay, you know what? We're going to do a classic plus and we're going to release Grim Patrol. We're going to release uh, the original 40-man version of Karazhan. We're going to open up the Caverns of Time. We're going to uh, have Hyjal in the game somehow. We're going to have right. Gilneas open up. Like there's so many things. Like you can literally open up the WoW map and there's so many yeah. places that you can, you just can't click on like there's a lot of stuff to do there i just i don't mm -hmm. think that you should do that over burning crusade that's the only the thing. thing is i think if they're going to do a classic plus thing it would have to be something that they haven't done in retail well yet so like yeah. like grim Batol, that was a cat dungeon right a lot right. of the stuff well Kevin, it could be totally different right what it, that's a, that's a whole new design team by the way maybe and now they're um, suddenly they're running two MMOs simultaneously, which is that's true. Ass. That is true. Yeah. It's, it's which a lot I think of work. they specifically said they don't want to do. They, I think there's an interview with Jalen Brack at BlizzCon, yeah, where he said specifically we don't want to run right. two MMOs. He yeah. said that a while back. Like he he said a few things a while back. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean things yeah. change. Obviously, I mean yeah, if, if things... Classic pulls in ten mil subscribers, they're going to do some stuff, right? Like yeah. they're not going to go. Yeah, that was cute. Whatever. You know, like that's a lot of that's a lot of people paying a lot of money well, to tell them. Right. I, I, I guess let me ask you this. <laughs> Kevin, if, if they're gonna do like if they're gonna do classic plus content, what's the first thing you would like to see in your opinion? Uh if they're gonna do classic plus, um I would like to see do stuff, honestly. Because that's uh, to me like But like is is us... there is there some dungeon or raid or theme that you would like oh. to see, I guess is what I'm asking. Um no, I'm pretty I'm pretty, pretty open. Okay. Impartial when it comes to just something new, like, uh, cause, cause here's the thing I want. I want something brand new that I have no expectations on. Like right. people say, Oh, open up Karazhan. And it's like, okay, well you're, you're coming in with expectations on how that's going to look, you know, what the interior is right. shaped like, right. the bosses that are in there, you know, like, well, ultimately I want something brand new to explore that nobody's ever seen that we can all get super pumped and excited about. Well, I, I will say this. I do think specifically with Karazhan, because uh, whenever we were talking to John, we were talking to John Stats, he said that I think there was like three different versions of Karazhan. And it was like they, they had two different versions that, that you guys scrapped, I guess, like during the development right. of the game. Like, I right. think it'd be cool to see the older, like the version that's never before been seen. Right. Or maybe right. doing something with like the, the Karazhan Crips. Right. <laughs> like, I think doing yeah. something with that. I can't probably. help but think of like, director's cuts of movies and yeah like, that's oh, basically yeah, yeah the, the, those scenes were actually deleted for a good reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah maybe they're terrible like, you know, like, bad. The the early sucks. Stuff, right like, oh this doesn't work at all let's scrap it and let's yeah. try again you know like, yeah, that makes sense oh so, yeah cutting room floor right it's like sometimes it belongs there but yeah ultimately i'd like to see new stuff you know that we just have no idea you know we get to be surprised and go exploring like yeah. that's the power to me of a brand new um, is, you know, again, something that we can just dive into with no knowledge of and just, you know, go crazy, tear it apart. Right. Yeah. And, and like I said, I, I think that's something that, in, in my opinion, that should probably be something that comes after a classic TBC or something, or at least after that's, yeah. that's in the works. And something else to consider is you are going to have to make classic fresh servers, right? And that that's kind of like a whole nother discussion, right? Like yeah, otherwise people right. are probably just going to go back to play private yeah. servers again. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, I, I do want to get to more questions. You know, yeah, yeah, like seasons. So yeah, uh, okay, okay. We, we got going. We got to keep going. People talk about like seasons and like a ladder server, stuff like that. I, I, I think people are like trying to draw from like Diablo or like kind of PoE, like those types of games do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't necessarily work the same way with WoW, but it would be like roughly a two-year cycle in which all the mm -hmm. patches occur and then there's enough time after the next patch before a new set of fresh servers come out, right? And like yeah. fresh is like its own its own meme, right? Like uh, it's, right, a, it's right. like its own thing on its own. It's the whole thing on its own. But um, 
But yeah, I do think that's something that should happen. I don't necessarily think like I think whenever people start talking about ladders and seasons and stuff like that, I think that it kind of I think that's kind of confusing, at least for me mm-hmm. anyway. I'm like, well, just fresh river just kind of makes the most sense. Yeah, <clears throat> it's 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 interesting that like I, I'd be really curious to know what percentage of people like private servers for that kind of season layout. Because my initial reaction is the last thing WoW needs is more Diablo elements, right? Like, right. Wow, being Diablified is why we're in the state we're in. You know, yeah. like, um, but I I understand that well, that's the way a lot of private server people have been playing, and they get a big kick out of it. You know, like racing to see, you know, to to rerun the world first race essentially, because mm-hmm. um, they want a second chance at it, right? So I I definitely understand that audience, um, but I'm curious what percentage of the audience is that mindset because a lot of us. Like, I think by the time Nax comes out, there's going to be a lot of people in Classic that still aren't through BWL or whatever, yep. you know, and it's just like, they might still be leveling, you know, right? So, yep. um, you know, again, it's like, they, they don't care about seasons. They don't, they, you know, that doesn't impact them at all. Yep. They don't even understand it, right? So, but there is an audience that does, but I just have no, I don't have my finger on the pulse of how many people love that season Yep. Or for servers or whatever it is. Yeah. I yeah, think... there's an interesting line. Like I, I here's here's the thing with like classic WoW. The second they stop offering classic WoW, and I think they never should stop offering, but if they do, mm-hmm. people go right back to private servers. And now right. private servers are of a higher quality because they can data mine and pull values from classic WoW and make yeah. the private yeah. servers better. So right. Blizzard, I hope they know they can't they can't ever stop offering classic. Otherwise, people are back on private service. Right. Now, if you're doing like on, I think classic on a two-year cycle or two and a half-year cycle is probably the way to go. If you're offering like a new like seasonal classic server every six months or something, I think you run the risk of taking the fun of like you, you at that point the focus of classic is the content and speedrunning content rather than the community. And I think you will. Mm-hmm. I think for most people, that's why people play classics. I think you'll turn those people away, those community players away mm-hmm. from the, from the seasonal classic servers I, I i'm very curious like you said i i don't know and i don't think anyone knows right now how successful those like maybe shorter lifespan seasonal servers would be i remember a long time ago when i was playing private servers a lot i thought it would be a really cool idea i actually had the same idea pretty much it would be like maybe an eight month vanilla server like where the content is being released very very quickly maybe like one raid right. each month or something i think that would be a lot of fun it would be a really fun experiment um but at that point, the focus is not as much community and more on the content and speedrunning itself and yeah. leveling fast. I don't know. It would, it would be an interesting experiment. I mean, speedrunning is, you know, very different than the WoW experience intended. You know, like right. the WoW right. experience has nothing to do with content, call it quits. It's about, you know, again, about interacting with everyone around you. Um, so, you know, serving that community, even though there is one, it's a very conscious choice to, you know, separate that group out from the rest of the people that want to experience classic and everything it entails so they can engage in this kind of persistent community based experience. So, um, which I'm not saying they shouldn't do, but it shouldn't come at the cost of anything going on, you know, everyone else playing classic. Yeah. I think that, um, I, I think that it ends up like you muddy the waters a lot. Like whenever you, mm-hmm. you there's like so many different branches of doing this and that. Uh, yeah. The the hope would be, and Stacey mentioned this earlier, that you really only need one server, right? You only need one server for it to be like a healthy game environment. But the hope would be that enough people would be playing and maybe like getting added into the overall player base that right. it works out. So, Yeah, because I'm trying to imagine the speedrunner, like, you know, server right that just refreshes and gives everyone a new chance you know it's like is there any sense of community is there like is the population so low and so determined to just be saying nobody's really talking i'll just execute it and it's like that doesn't mm-hmm. sound like you know that that's fun for people participating but it doesn't sound like right yeah i think um I, I think the whole speed running thing, like it, it's just different people are into different things. So like yeah. for, for me, like that's not like the kind of guild that I would want to run, but I, I totally like, I totally respect all that. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's just a question of what is Blizzard, you know, how many different groups does Blizzard want to satisfy? 
Do they want to satisfy an esports group? Do they want to satisfy a speed running group? Do they want to satisfy a, you know, a, a stay the same way forever uh, group? Um, and in Classic Plus, there's a million different versions of that. They can play. Yeah, with the whole esports satisfying esports people, you know, I think with dual tournaments, and I had a dual tournament on the on the demo, and I'm planning on having a dual tournament on the beta. With dual tournaments, that is sort of bringing esports into classic WoW, mm -hmm. and with the whole like dual tournament griefing situation, it comes down to is there, is it reasonable to expect to have a dual tournament on a PvP server or a PVE server really without being griefed? Is that a reasonable expectation? And honestly, I think no. no. I think that is that. Yeah. That that's inherent to vanilla WoW. That can happen. Yeah. Other players should not be punished for doing that. Yeah. Um, now, I personally think it would be cool to have at the end of each phase or so, like you know, every couple months, to have a tournament server that's brought up for two two or three weeks. I think that'd be cool, where people could do stuff like this. They could have their pre-mades. They could have uh, they could have their dual tournaments. I think it'd right. be cool. Are they going to do that? Are they going to try to cater to to a classical esports crowd? I don't know. Is it worth doing? I don't know. I think it'd be cool, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. But uh, are they going to set it up like Minecraft? Runs the server, etc. <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah. everyone just jumps in and plays whatever their flavor is. Yeah, it's actually so, really interesting because Blizzard heavily invested in esports a couple of years back. They actually purchased the MLG streaming platform, and they went all in. And mm -hmm. it's only recently that they've kind of started to divest a bit. Obviously, they canceled their Heroes of the Storm esports support, I think. And recently, they had some layoffs in their esports departments. It's interesting because Vanilla WoW is not the first game that comes to mind when you think of esports or tournaments or anything like that. But dueling in particular, I don't know what it is about it. There's something, there's something there. And uh, whether or not they want to decide to support it with like tournament realms every once in a while. I, I don't like the idea of, horse, of forcing esports on everything or anything like that, but um, I don't know. It was, well, it's just an interesting question to ask. People yeah. people obviously like watching it, right? And if people, mm -hmm. there's, there's obviously a uh, large amount of people who enjoy watching vanilla WoW PvP. Do they understand it all the time? No, they don't, right? But it's at Do least easy to, to watch. All the time? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like they, they like at least people want to watch, right? And it's it's something that you can look at even as somebody I, I have a lot of people, right? I I don't have the all the same people who used to watch my channel whenever I was doing IRL and variety stuff, but I have a lot of people who are watching my classic streams who they started watching me whenever I was doing more IRL variety, just chatting, all that sort of stuff, right? Uh and they I don't know anything about wow. But it's a very easy game to watch. And they said they've tried watching Retail WoW before. And there's so many just like huge numbers. Lasers are flying all over the place. There's so much going on the screen. And they're like, I can't watch Late. this. Like I literally can't. Like, But I watch your character. You attack. And I hear, tink. Oh, he parried. It says parry. Great. Dodge. Like it's easy to watch. Like it's it's a very like uh it's a very intuitive viewing experience, right? Even if you don't understand like the nuance of what everybody's doing, each like each mm -hmm. button they press, each step they take, even if you don't understand the nuance to it, it's a very good viewing experience. So yeah. I, I I don't know. I, I think like uh I, I do think that there's obviously like a, a large amount of people that want to watch it. We've seen the numbers, right? Like we, we've seen like dueling tournaments do very well. Uh, for classic right whether we were doing the level 19 tournaments or whether uh, you know like tips did the horde tournament we're going to do an alliance tournament coming up sometime soon um, yeah so I, I don't know I think there's definitely like a, a um, for, for lack of a better word uh, like a market of people that want to watch that right there's there's a community of people that want to watch duels and pvp and uh pre-made versus pre-made battlegrounds like you see it all the time like the streamers will go in and like they'll they'll have their group and they might queue with like two or three people and then they go up against another group that might have a pre-made okay so, let's get our pre-made together and then they get in voice and then they beat them okay now we got to get in voice so people love watching this pre-made versus pre-made go back and forth too so uh, i don't know I, I think it's cool right i, I do let me let cool. me ask you guys this i want to know what you guys and also chat i guess is watching a vanilla WoW dual tournament sort of like watching a NASCAR race where you hope that a car explodes, where you hope that there is griefing? Like, are, are people sitting there <laughs> hoping that something goes wrong and if someone crashes the tournament? Is that part of 
Yeah, I, I think that's a part of everything. I think right? that might play in a little bit. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. you know what it is? People want to see their favorite streamers clash. I think that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Like you hear Soda Pop and Anasmin are, are doing something on stream. They're about to fight each other. Dude, I find myself tuning in. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. On top, but 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 then I think about the first dueling tournament, Stay Safe, like the first ones we did. Like I, I can't remember at the time. Did we have any big streamers involved? Like I don't think it. I don't think as was Asmin involved no, or no. Soda or any. It was basically just the community, and those were still highly watched too. So yeah. who knows, you know? Yeah, I think it's just fun. Yeah. To, it's fun to watch, and you know what's good? A lot of people, and this is one of those things that uh, you, you're starting to see. Like, okay, these are the list of. There's like a long list of things, or maybe let's just say a list of things that maybe like the the retail guys, the the guys who were big PVPers in retail WoW. Like, oh, I don't, I, I'm not really interested in classic because there's no rating, there's no this, there's no that, right? Like, you can't point to a rating and be like, hey, check my rating. Like, I'm the best. Look at that number, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually think that not having that and and leaving like who's the best at this, who's oh, the yeah. best at that, up to interpretation, actually right. makes it so much more interesting because the discussion doesn't end. Can it get tired? Right. Can it get can it get boring? Like just like talking about the That's same why thing. This is the worst. You know, it's just like <laughs> you can't just be four dudes talking smack about who's right. You know, we can all just go to the find out exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It so like all the fun. Right. So like you can it's cool to see like there's discussion. Oh, I think so and so is the best warrior because of this. I think so and so is the best mage because of this. Um yeah, like I, I just I think it's interesting, right? I think it's cool because there's discussion there, there's there's involvement, there's more people interacting with each other. I like that. I think it's great. So I don't have a phone. That was a that was a prop. Okay, I don't <laughs> actually have a phone. Right. Immortal cannot be played, but just so you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People are saying it's like it's like crap talking and personalities like pro wrestling. Yeah, like everybody knew that when Floyd Mayweather walked into the ring with Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather was gonna win. I mean, he's a professional boxer. Are you, dude? Honestly, dude, are I you put, kidding me? Okay. I put fifty dollars. <laughs> are you kidding me, dude? And I lost it. Okay, but I thought, listen, man, the odds were one to five. I could have walked away with two fifty, man. I took the risk. I thought he was gonna win. Honestly, <laughs> turns out he didn't. But anyway, I'll let you make can make. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I think a lot of people knew that it wasn't gonna be like the highest form of you know boxing competition in the sense that one of them's obviously an MMA fighter, one of them's a professional boxer. So it's not like you're getting you know the two best in their primes going at it. But it was still the most successful pay per view of all time because their personalities. Connor obviously very outgoing, very eccentric, big personality. Same goes with Floyd in the boxing world. And people just wanted to watch them clash. Same goes with uh, what are those two YouTubers that fought recently? Logan Paul and uh, KSI. Right. Heard of that's that sold how many million pay-per-views? Like it sold millions, dude. Neither of them are professionals. Neither of them are boxers. But people want to watch people they like fight that's sometimes. Right. And that, um, that's only the highest rated, highest, most successful. Absolutely. Uh, Which is you because the next one hasn't come out yet. The next one is actually the U.S. Marine Corps versus three trillion lions. It's going to be one to watch. True. Yes. What? Wow. Yeah. It's going to be pretty impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, you know I think we should, you know we should get a sweaty gel. What, what's up? I said, you know what's coming up before the bid ends? The S1 versus Stay Safe rematch. We're going to hype it up. We're going to plan it out. It's I have a doctor's I have a doctor's appointment. Whenever that's going to be scheduled, I'll have one. Oh, actually, same. I just remember it. Same, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. Um, yeah. So, guys, we're going to take a few more questions. Uh, we're going to take a few more questions. We'll take some questions out of chat. Uh, I was taking questions off Twitter. Uh, but we're gonna take a few more questions out of chat here before we we call it. We've, we've kind of we kind of got stuck on a couple questions because whenever whenever we get together we talk a lot. We're uh, we're talkers. This is kind of how it goes. So, uh, <laughs> uh, what's Kevin's yeah, favorite zone or instance? No, you hang up. First. Yeah, what's yeah, my yeah. Favorite zone or instance? Um, you know, I, I go back to this one a lot. It's not my favorite. I have so many that I, but uh, from a, as a game designer, um, I was always really impressed with Westfall. Because mm. Westfall is, on paper, a super sleepy zone. Okay. It's like, here's just a bunch of farmland. It's very simple, you know. Um, and when you think about that on paper, it's just like, how is anyone going to make this interesting? Right next to it is the spooky, you know, Duskwood. And it's just like, okay, that's something I can work with, right? Um, that's going to automatically be awesome. But the job that Matt Sanders did, Matt Sanders, the creator of that, uh, Captain Sanders, you know, that uh -huh. you're, cut, um, you're cutting out a little bit, by the way. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Um, but uh, Westfall to me is one that really demonstrates the quality of the level designer 
uh, because it's on paper, it's such a sleepy zone, but in, in, in practice, it's that zone is amazing. It looks amazing. It's super fun to play in. Mm -hmm. It's got all kinds of great elements. Um, it's just such a great example of how, you know, the, the level designers on the team took simple concepts and hit them. So I love that zone. Kevin, okay. I disagree with everything you just said. <laughs> Literally everything you just said, I 100% disagree. That's why you're alive. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's okay. We can disagree. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I'm yeah, calling I, Matt Sanders. I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> that's why you, you can tell him, man. <laughs> that's okay. That's what the drop rates for the Captain Sanders bottles. Oh yeah. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Close, very close to zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Next question. Uh, let's see, guys. Yeah, we are we are still doing Q and A for a little bit, so we're taking some questions out of chat. Uh, oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Did they forget to add simple stuff like a prop paladin's taunt uh, or other class breaking stuff, or was it on purpose? Uh, we we've talked about this before. Do you do you want to do you want to go into it, Kevin? I'm sorry, I missed the question. What did they did, like? Why did they not add like prop paladin taunt, for example? Why did you, why did you guys not have a taunt oh, for the prop paladin? Uh, because we wanted it to be different than the other mm -hmm. the other taunt, and I didn't have the tech yet to make the taunt I want. So warrior taunt is about being intimidating, insulting the you know, monster's mother, whatever, it's very right. direct. Um, Paladins is more about protecting. I'm going to cast it on a friend. I'm going to protect a friend. It's going to get, you know, a diff it's going to play a different way. So, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have the tech to make all those things work until later on. So, and I knew that if I gave them just a standard taunt, you can't go back on that and give them something else because they're used to that. They like that mm -hmm. and they're going to complain. So I held out and, uh, made sure I, you know, kept the, the philosophy alive that each class plays different and does things. There. So, mm -hmm. so what, what was your ideal taunt? What would that have looked like for paladins for prop alleys? Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but the one you cast on a friend and if they're, if they have aggro on anything, then it transfers to you, essentially. So it's also a better AOE taunt because it's not one mob right. that you're targeting. Okay. It's grabbing all the things that that friend has put aggro and so. Mm -hmm. And again, that feels more like I'm protecting a guy. Right. I yeah. okay. my spells on friends. Yeah, I, I certainly think like uh, the way that the, the Paladin taunt, taunt that was added in Burning Crusade, I, I think it was cool. And people made macros to where it was like target of target, yeah. righteous defense. Which totally yeah. yeah, which is how it is. But like like we talked about earlier, like the, the original design of the game was there's so many like RPG elements to it. Right. Uh, there's so many RPG elements to it. There's so much more. Uh, it's not as much like, I guess, like hyper optimized, right? Where everything's right. just like this is this, this is this. And um, people know from my stream that I'm big on the thematics. You know, I mm -hmm. I love it when thematics and design walk hand in hand, you know. Yeah. Everything like, just makes sense. Yeah, I think it's cool. Like it makes the game like you, you can get more into the game, like you're you, it makes the characters more special, makes the, the classes more special whenever they're different. Um where it, I mean I, I feel like again, I like I, I don't like to go like dump on retail wow all the time, but that is that is the game to compare it to because it's how much the game has changed over the years. Right. But like a lot of retail WoW is like, okay, here's my resource, build, build, build. Here's my combo points, dump my combo points. Like it feels like a yeah. bunch of classes are like that. Uh, mm -hmm. You have your you have your two minute. Everybody has a two minute DPS cooldown or whatever it is. Um, it, it's just everything is just so similar, right? Yeah. Um, and you can justify, you know, mechanical ideas, right? When you go mm -hmm. back and try to add the flavor on top of it, you can usually find a way, but. Um, I think a lot of those ways end up feeling awkward. They just don't fit, right? So it's like everyone has a heal. Okay. What is the warrior doing to heal himself that actually makes sense? You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's just shouting and suddenly his wounds heal? Okay, that doesn't make sense. So there you go. He's got a heal. Mm -hmm. Right. Healing shout. There we go. There it's you like, go. What? There it is. Everybody can heal. Like, I remember, I think this was in Cataclysm. Like, warriors could heal so much. Actually, like, every class could heal a ton in Cataclysm. But they, it would be like, oh, it's a self-heal, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, Everybody okay. was very yeah. like heavily self-sustained. Like rogues had recuperate, and it was just like, dude, come on, mm -hmm. like, like, like yeah. recuperate, vanish, and it's like full health, and come back and reopen on me. I'm like, dude, really? It, it was just like it was really really annoying. Like yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> somebody somebody has asked this a few times. Uh, where, where is this one? Somebody keeps mentioning this. Let me see if I can find it. It's about like. And I just want to clarify, should spam sheeping targets to prevent a player from killing something be bannable or fun in games? Uh, so you can't even do it. They like that's something from private servers. Mucho, yeah, Mucho if a Dexa. target's tapped, you can't do that. Yeah. Now, as a warlock, I can banish someone else's elemental or demon that they're killing. So I actually have on the beta run around and griefed people and done that. Uh, warriors trying to get their... Uh, Roman Dax, I've sat out there before and just banished elementals, and I think it's really funny. Uh, it, I, and I'm surprised at the double standard, actually, that you can't do it with poly, but you can do it with banish. It's quite interesting. Um, but hey, yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's what it is. Um, yeah, it's funny, because like the way the sheep was designed was that not get an initial tick to prevent that behavior from actually being right. They wouldn't heal until a couple seconds after. So all you had to do was hit them, and it would break the sheep, and you'd be on your way. So it would just be a waste of mana mage. Um, but things changed over time, and they started getting initial tick. Ticks started coming fast to heal them up, and so that became a thing we had to worry about. But um, it puts you in this weird case, because it's like there are legitimate cases where you want to sheep a guy that, you know, the guy's running away from a save them mm -hmm. can't yeah, you're cutting out again you're cutting banish, out again you know like, um sorry um the banish thing is the same place it's like there are legitimate you know times where you're trying to save someone to banish and you want to allow for those things to again it's like in the in the interest of not creating utopia you know allow those occur. and the, the world is better for them. right um this is, a, this is another good question. Um, I'm a game designer myself, and I have no doubt that the designers had a vision for each class. Uh, which class was the hardest to reconciliate vision and concrete design? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I can say that, you know, Paladin, Redden is specific. We failed to. Mm -hmm. Can you try, can you try pulling your mic up maybe a little bit? I don't know. For whatever reason, it seems to be picking up uh, sometimes. How's that? Should be good. Um, yeah, so Red Paladin, you to make sure everyone. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's like getting worse now. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. So try try this. Go into I can't I can't load up Discord settings on my computer right now. Maybe try going into your voice settings and there's like a uh, automatically detect thing. If you uncheck that and just drag it like all the way down. Let's take a look. No, that was that was not my question, by the way, guys. I am not the game developer. I was right. reading it out of chat. Right. <laughs> but I was like, uh. All right, how's that? Uh, yeah, that should be good. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, the Red Paladin, I think, failed to live up to the class fantasy. So that was difficult because um, I didn't expect it was going to fail to live up to his fantasy as, as much as it did. Um, in general, I, it, it's so funny. Like people ask me what's the hardest, but, uh, I loved working on all of them so much that it was such a, you know, a uh, work of passion, you know, that, um, I didn't mind when they had problems. They were all just new puzzles to solve. Right. Mm -hmm. And so every little problem, and I, and that's all I did over time to see their flaws. And so, but I was excited to dive back in and try to solve these problems and getting them just a, that little bit better. So, um, but, you know, making the Druid, you know, original hybrid idea work, uh, we found to be near impossible. Uh, Red, Red Paladins fulfilling the fantasy of hammer swinging, healing support guy didn't work out as well as we thought. Uh, the hunter was difficult, uh, time consuming in a time consuming way because every new zone met new beasts, which meant all kinds of new playable, fun, unique pets. So he was like doing two classes every time we expanded. Um, so there were a lot of little things that were time consuming or tricky, but I just love working on them so much that I didn't mind it. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Um, this is this is one of those things where a lot of people keep people people keep bringing this up, right? They're talking about the. I've seen this like five or six times. People talking about like the torrent hitbox, um, right. because it's something on like I guess on private servers they didn't have it, where the torrent hitbox was was the uh, was like I think they said it's like two yards bigger. Did this factor into any like design des- design yeah design decisions? Uh, whenever it came to like class design and um, uh, with torrents, right? Like torrent hunters, for example, in their dead zone. Uh. No, it didn't impact uh, the design choices we made, but we were trying to make the game feel right, to look right, to mm-hmm. play, you know, in a way that was consistent with, you know, the difference in size between gnomes and torrent, you know. Um, but a lot of that stuff is contrary to what you want from, like, a design experience in, in terms of fairness. Like, PvP is really difficult to allow you know, Torin to have extra range, you know, just because of their size. It's like, you kind of expect that from a realistic point of view, but you don't want everyone going Torin because of it, or, you know, certain race class combinations being the only thing you can Mm -hmm. choose because of that, you know, kind of thing. So uh, it was always a tricky thing to work with, trying to solve both realism and feeling good and, you know, the fairness or design balance of what people expect. Okay. Uh, well, guys, um, we're going to take just maybe just one or two more questions. We've been going for, for a good while now, uh, longer longer than we had initially planned. Um, but yeah, we'll be taking maybe just one or two more questions. Uh, if you guys have anything else, we can we can do that after the stream, guys. Uh, tips will be going live. I'll be I'll be hosting tips. Um, of uh, course, I actually will will not be going live. Went a little bit over, um, so I got to head out. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so tips will not be going live. Um, Stacey, if you're not going live? Nah, I'm going to take the evening off. So I guess it'll be... Kevin, you're not going live either, are you? No, I'm not. Yeah, so... Prom is live. All right. So, but but yeah, we'll we'll figure that out in a second. Um, Yeah, either way, we're going to take a few more questions. uh, And then then we'll we'll go from there. So... um, Hmm. What is okay? So, Kevin, what is your most fond memory as a faceless player? Like, whenever you were playing the game, who, like, what? Yeah, what was the ga- the game experience like for you playing the game? Like, did you just did you play with other devs? Did you just kind of like do your own thing and nobody knew who you were? Um, I did both of those. Yeah, I did okay. raid a lot. Um, there were two reasons for that. One, we had tons of people raiding, tons of people with raid experience, and and most of the office was, especially amongst the game design team, we're all pretty hardcore gamers. So those guys were raiding constantly. Those guys were pushing the envelope. A a fair number of them were in progression guilds and other games, right? So they they just carried on. Um, And I felt, you know, just as I felt with the Red Paladin, I needed to get in there and make sure I understood the day-to-day experience. I also felt I needed to understand the leveling and the solo sort of experience to make sure that was really helpful, uh, healthy in terms of playing. so I did that a lot of the time. Also, my kids were starting to be born. So it was easier <laughs> for me to, you know, not commit to, you know, longer experiences. Right. So I'd have a half an hour here and, you know, or, or two hours here. And so uh, it was easier for me to solo most of the time. So I did a lot of soloing and, but there were a lot of nights early on, especially where I would hook up with other devs from the you know team and we'd run through various dungeons. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it was, I, I don't think anybody ever knew who I was. So it was very anonymous and it was very fun just to watch people, you know, experience the game, interact with the world uh, and have no idea, you know, that I was who I was Yeah. Uh, and talk trash about their class or other people's classes or wh- whatever it was, you know, anything about the game that they didn't like. Yeah, uh, but- yeah. But it, honestly, like, again, most of the experiences were good. Like, most people were just having such a fun time that uh, it was just it was just fun to be next to that, to draw inspiration from and get excited about the next day's work and everything going on. So good times. I had a blast. Great. And here's uh, here's something else somebody else asked earlier, and, I, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll finish it up with a fun one. If you had to say what your favorite ability was to design... 
amongst all the classes, what would you say your favorite ability was? That might be a tough one. Oh, yeah, is Bubble Hearth one ability? Or is That's that, a good question. That, that, I, I would say Bubble Hearth. <laughs> was that intended? Was oh, Bubble Hearth intended? <laughs> um, no. It, well, I, yeah, we knew it would happen. Right. Um, but it wasn't but, like a... But like it's it, not like we set out to make that happen. Like, right. It wasn't like on a list somewhere. Of make sure the paladin can hold the heart, right? So <laughs> yeah, it's like, like wait we a knew second. he was going to have divine shield. And yeah. We knew we were going to have hearthstones, you know? So yeah. like, wait a they go it's together crazy. like chocolate and peanut butter. So yeah. Easy class. chocolate, peanut butter, and paladins. Yeah, um, there you go. But uh, yeah, some other highlights. Uh, I love all the movement powers, especially. They're just, they feel so good. Charge, uh, blink. Um, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Those all felt really good. Uh, Polymorph, I thought was a great spell in terms of, um, you know, a lot of other games that had crowd control, but there was no visual representation other than maybe some Zs over the head or you remember like the Dark Age of Camelot Zs. Right, yeah, the, uh, the Mez, yeah. But Polymorph was just so perfect at telling everyone, hey, this is a sheep, don't hit it, right? <laughs> right. Like, it was just so clear this is not the thing you're supposed to be hitting, right? So um, right, I yeah. love that about it. Um, stealth, I thought, you know, I like, I'm like. i a big fan of stealth mechanics in these kinds of games. And obviously, there's a lot of, you know, variation on that. But it felt really good. Uh, we did a lot of tuning on how it felt to sneak around and how dangerous it was at times. And uh, mm -hmm. that one just felt really good. So I like that one a lot, too. Uh, what else? Um, I do love dots. They're very, very unique in their feeling. Uh, so Warlock class, you know, having tons of dots was, um, I don't have a particular favorite, but I just love the dot mechanic that, uh, you're already dead and you don't know it type of thing, um, is really cool. Um, what else? The shape shifting I thought turned out really well on Druids. Um, you know, we just kind of a lot of a lot of games had you could turn into this one animal, you know, once in a while um, with a visual change. But we really went crazy with the different forms and the different roles they could all fill. So um, that one turned out really well, too. All right. Honestly, uh, I thought you guys did yeah. such a good job with Warlocks in particular, like like. The, the, the infernal spell, the, the enslaved demon spell. Mm -hmm. That requires it yeah. to actually go out and enslave a demon. Like I distinctly have memories of that from back in vanilla, like enslaving an, an infernal for the first time. Right. Especially coming from Warcraft Three, where infernals were kind of, you know, it was in the cinematic and it was kind of a big yeah, part yeah. of the game with Arkham on summoning them and stuff. So it was like, in general, I, I think you guys hit the warlock class in particular, like just hit the nail on the head, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, true. Yeah. Enslave and mind control are both in that category as well. Like. Every time you give players a tool like that to take the world and the context within the world and be super creative with it is always a good time. And then the PvP, you know, uses of mind control obviously never fail to disappoint. So that's another great one. Wasn't wasn't Warlock? I don't know if this is true. I heard this rumor. Wasn't Warlock the last class you guys ended up coming up with or adding to Classic WoW? It was like the the last classic. Uh, yeah, we, we knew we wanted to, what I always call the free class, which is like a class that no other game has, has done in terms of its its look and its, you know, thematic. And because no one had really done Warlock, you know, they've done Necromancer and EverQuest. That was their free class. And we were like, well, we can't just do Necromancer, even though it has a strong Warcraft, you know, history. Um, but uh, we can do Warlock. Let's do Warlock. And it'll be, it'll be uh, very different than the other class. So we got to put all our crazy ideas into the warlock, which was really fun to make. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome guys. It's been a fantastic classic cast again, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, I know it was a little bit always. short notice. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's always a great time having you on and uh, you, you, you've been a big part of this game and the development of this game. Uh, you know, even, even if it's not like on the classic re-release, it's the original game. So it's, it's been right, right. really, really awesome to see like everything that's come out of it, the love for the game and, uh, everybody's just excited to have it back. So it's, yeah, so it's exciting. awesome having you on. Yeah. Right on. Thanks again, guys.
Yeah, of course. Thanks Guys, please, if you haven't already, please go follow Kevin Jordan on Twitch. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel as well, Kevin Jordan on YouTube. Tips out, baby. Stay safe, TV. Go follow these guys. Um, Tips was, in, uh, it was originally on the stream, but he has some stuff to come up that he has to go take care of tonight. Uh, I'll keep the stream going for a little bit. Uh, we can we can talk about some stuff, do some things. Um, I know some people subbed and resubbed. I'll, I'll get to those as well. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you guys next time. Classicast on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash SFANTV. If you guys missed the beginning part of the Classicast, this will be there tomorrow sometime. So, again, thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. Yep. Take care, later, boys.